and what is this thing? Gio should never play for U.S. men's national team again because of the action of his parents. Because- what an idiot! Oh, what type of Muppet does this? Muppets. Absolute Muppets. I, I'm not going to be the best person to give a whole explanation here, but that's... Booty, booty, sick, sick. Booty, booty. Fucking deal with it. Yeah. What are we really doing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can agree with that. There are a zebra in between a tarantula and an elephant. Has been nothing more than a sham. So yeah, we didn't play well, but you know what? At the end of the day... We got the job done. It's going to be a good time for sure. Oh, sex with the first cousin would indeed be incest. And- I'm going to be with another man. <laughs> you better run just as fast as you can, little girl. Hide your head in the sand, little girl. Catch you with another man. That's the end. Whoop. Little girl, that little song by John Lennon and the Beatles, kind of a reminder of the whole OJ situation, right? Except he took it literally. Um, anyhow, he's gone. Uh, but 1994, where the hell were you, Brett? 1994, I was in college. You Hold were on. in like, yeah, you were like fifth grade, right? 1994, uh, maybe seven, uh, 11, I've been 11 years old, so like third grade. Six. Or sixth grade, somewhere around there, right? Yeah. Nine, ten, eleven, fifth. We've been about fifth, six, about six, but that range. I'm sure they made you watch that in class, though, didn't they? Like the trial and all that, or they skipped that? The OJ trial? Yeah. Uh no, never watched that. Okay. I know people are talking about like they had to watch it in class. I find that like really? You watch that in class? In your middle school class? That's it's... kind of that that had some pretty icky moments but um anyhow um it is what it is uh it was a huge deal in 94 watching the the bronco being chased and all that it was crazy shit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah welcome to the straight red card thank you all for showing up uh, i love the new countdown by the way brett <laughs> Th- thanks to grant for um yeah. putting that together or at least putting the original footage together which you added some rock and roll music to which i appreciate mm-hmm. Because if I was going to be in an intro like that, I'd certainly, uh, and dancing, it would have to be with music just like that. Um, <laughs> the turd in the background says, welcome back to the straight red card. My creative juices are not flowing tonight. I've got nothing. However, my wife's vagina juices are flowing as she squirted me directly in the eye. That's probably that's just... Quali- that's some quality aim, man. Nah, that's probably just urine. I hate to break it to him. It's urine. But um, that's okay. I mean, anyhow, that all that stuff in the porn movies, 99% of that's just urine. They're just peeing. It's not. So don't buy into that. Um, yeah. We're not going to get into circumcision tonight. I already saw that on the right side. Not going to do it. Um, I did notice that, um, that we had two odd separate points of view come out. Like um, two people who said, you know, those earthquakes and those eclipses and then the locusts coming. (laughs) Well, listen, all those happen, all those things, some of them happen in actual cycles that we know about. Right. And that was the gal on The View. What's her name? Can't remember. It's not Whoopi. I don't know. Whoopi is the one that told her, hey, girl, no, the locusts come every that's a cycle thing. Um, Oh, no. Talk about cicadas. Cicadas. Um, and then she was like, Why do people watch the view? Seriously, I don't know. And Whoopi's like, Hold on, girl, no, don't say anything more. You're gonna look stupid, basically, because the eclipse is a cycle thing. That's not a sign from God, it's not a sign of climate change, which is what this chick was trying to say, which was insane, just absolutely insane. And then on the other side of the aisle, you want to go all the way to the other side, we had um Mary. Marjorie Taylor Green saying God is sending America a strong sign to repent because of the earthquakes, because of the eclipse. Jeez it's like, Christ. no, girl, no, girl, don't say stuff like that. Now you're you're saying stuff just as stupid as the view. And why does it always have to be God? And why do I need to repent? Why does everything have to be about God? I don't know. But anyhow, so well, I, mean, to- I go outside, I do my my sun dances and. It still turns nighttime. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> the that sun, mean? the sun went down at eight. You must repent. God, God. Climate, 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, listen, if you're going to be for either of those things, you want to be pro-God and all that, or you want to be, you know, um, you know, very green about, the, at least get your facts straight and don't come off like a total idiot. That's what I would recommend. I repent to these three red cards, says Kevin Paulette. Yes, that's mm -hmm. a good thing. Um, I, uh, you know, we're not saying we're gods or anything. Certainly not. Derek, I would wager just about every single person that watches of you is also a Dolly Parton fan. Don't you think uh, so? Because of my big breasts? <laughs> <laughs> my my moves? My man no, moves? No, wasn't, wasn't going with that. No, I was leading into something, but okay. uh, Dolly, Dolly, Parton, Dolly Parton fans are, uh, are, are different. Right, because of my uh, wonderful voice, my singing abilities. No, again, we're just, I'm just I'm talking. I'm talking about a, a population of women who watch The View. Okay, I'm leading into something else here. But it concerned Dolly Parton. Yes, because Dolly Parton fans are the best. I love TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you put the full name of the person on your shirt. You really do. Um, yeah. And I don't believe the guy on the left could do a DP. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's only got one one hole back there. <laughs> maybe, maybe insane, I guess. I, don't know. I guess he could stuff two in there. That'd still be a DP, right? <laughs> they do that all the time. Well, an incredibly see. smooth segue, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there going like, all right, I'm trying to weave this in there. And you're like, why? Because of my moves? I'm like, oh, no, when I, when I'm going to set this up again. Well, Why? Because you, my deep, sultry voice? Oh. Well, you compared me to Dolly Parton, so I can only think... Jack Panetta wants to be educated on what a DP is. Uh, designated player. Yep, 100%. And you, can, and you can fit two of them in the same orifice, apparently. Or one in one orifice and one <laughs> in the other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could do a spit, spit roast. Fumar. They're, they're, they're usually about a quarter of an inch away from each other, too, in inserting. Right. If and, you get my drift. Fumar's saying you could do a spit roast, but what I'm saying is, if you could see that. Is that considered a That's not, I it's consider not, that, it's not. I mean, technically speaking, yes, penetration does occur there, but. It's not the, the same thing, though. Um, it's not classified in the porn industry as the same thing. A spit roast is just a spit roast, right? Derek knows all about. That's an, the, that's an Eiffel Tower, by the way. <laughs> it's an Eiffel Tower, you know, one from one end, one from the other. We don't in there. And then they high five over top of her. Oh, <laughs> that's called an Eiffel Tower. But Eiffel if you Tower. if you don't if you don't high five, it's simply just a spit roast. <laughs> okay. Tony Martinez is paying attention already. Tabs galore. Yeah, I just saw that, and I'm like, how in the hell do you have that much content for this show? Uh, um, I, I went I went searching all the dark crevices of Twitter for this stuff. <laughs> but after, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. And after this picture, <laughs> I was thinking not content, maybe maybe content. Content, yeah, content. yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everyone. Make sure you like and subscribe as we head into the deeper orifices of this show. Um uh there is a good interview you should check out not now but later between Tact and Joe Lowry. Lowry being the guy who said all this talk about Greg Berhalter and coaching and how important it is is a red herring. They had a debate on tax show. It was really good. I do recommend it. It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, the one thing about being in this now where I can see what's going on, like I can see the chat, right, hmm. the comments, and then I can see who's watching, who's not watching. It's like, wow, that's just almost too much information for myself to go on. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you know, now that I've I've pressed myself, I did want to say that guy Connor, who covers all the lead stuff mm. uh in his fan channel, he needs to um which is the leads uh fans channel, he needs to find a hairstyle and just stick with it for a while, just stay with the same hairstyle. And I don't think the one where he shaves it all the way up to here, so he looks like a medieval knight. I'm not sure that one's working for him, but still a good show and i'm still watching it i'm still following leads i'm hoping they do get promoted it would be fun but things got a little sketchy this weekend obviously so we'll see what mm. happens there not this weekend on tuesday tuesday um and we've got stuff to cover on um the midweek report too we'll get to that um i guess we got plenty to cover according to brett so let's <laughs> get it started so yeah, let's get it started let's get it started yeah all right sorry
I don't even. Like uh, I see. Song. I see you saying the uh, the censored version of that song. I don't even like that song. I'll be really honest. Um, not one of my favorites. Do you know what it was? Instead of get, let's get it started. Let's get it farted. Let's get it. Let's get it. I don't know what. What else could it be? It's let's get, and then retarded. Let's get oh, retarded. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess around that point they stopped using the R word. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah. I no, Kevin. I don't know the real words. <laughs> let's get retarded is the original. I never knew that. I'm not a fan particular of that song by that band. So let's just put it that way. Are you a fan of any of Black Eyed Peas songs? Um, is that also the band with the female singer? Yeah, Fergie was in it. Um, now then I'm not sure I do. I'm trying to think of the other band. I think they were from one of the island nations and they had a singer. Um, I like that band, at least the one that had the chorus. Do, 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 do this song killing me softly with this song, which is a cover, but that part's a what cover. Her name, uh, the, the VGs, VGs, Fuji's, Fuji's. That, that <laughs> I like songs by that band. I'm not sure about Black Eyed Peas. You, Never really you mentioned, line. you mentioned, I, I don't really think they were from an island nation, but uh, some of them were. You, you mentioned, you mentioned island nation, and my mind immediately went to the Baja men. <laughs> But then you said there's a female lead singer. I'm like, I don't think that was it. Uh, I don't think they had a female singer. Which band was Wyclef in? Fuji's? I think so. Yeah. Who you're I thinking think. about is Lauren Hill as a singer. Yeah, Lauren Hill. Beautiful yeah. voice. Almost so beautiful. It's like, yeah. Damn. yeah. That's what they're trying to refer to. Yeah, Wyclef is Haitian. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I got some of that right. All right, what are we starting on, Brett? Uh, Derek, I wanted, I wanted to bring this up, not necessarily for the content of the cost per ticket, because who cares about that? Mm -hmm. uh, Chicago Fire is hosting uh, Indy 11 on the round three of the U.S. Open Cup. Woo! Here soon, actually. I think it's uh, sometime next week, maybe? Go, Indy. Oh, uh, the 17th. There we go. It's Wednesday. And uh, I wanted to bring this up because one of the big excuses and lies are being peddled by Nelson Rodriguez and Don Garber for why he wanted the MLS next pro teams included was because they lose a lot of money. They lose money. All the MLS teams lose money in the open cup because they have to travel to all these places. But Chicago fire too are, unless there was some amateur team that is below division three Every single match that Chicago Fire two and, and uh, New York Red Bulls are going to play two are going to play are going to be at home, empty stands. Which means that SeatGeek Stadium has to open up to the public. To uh, you know, they're going to try to sell tickets, but they didn't. Have, they've sold like fifty tickets to each match so far. Right. It is a Wednesday, and I understand that's a bitch to get out uh, all the way to Bridgeview. But um, that if that game's in Indy, it's packed. Exactly, hundred percent. Yes, that's kind of the point. Because now. Now Chicago's going to be playing all their games at home, which means they got to open up SeatGeek Stadium, which means they're going to lose more money opening that stadium and you know supplying the the labor costs and everything that goes with it. Right. Then if they were to just get a bus and shuttle their asses down to Indianapolis. Right. Right. It would have been better same. off if they <laughs> if it were the big boy team, the game would be in Indy. But since it's yeah. the two, two team, uh, if it's being played in Chicago, which means I mean. That's rent they're paying there, and uh, they're not going to fill any seats. Like you said, 50 tickets, mm -hmm. 100 people will show up for that because no one cares about MLS Next Pro. Absolutely 50 people do in all of Chicago, maybe 100, all right? And mm -hmm. those are the people who are going to show up. But if that game's in Indy and it's a packed stadium, which is what it would be, Chicago would actually maybe take a percentage of that home. I think yeah. they would have, right? I mean, uh, the old I don't rules? know. I don't. I don't know if the new rules have that yet. I think that's one thing they're pushing for. I think what uh, U.S. Soccer or U.S. Soccer has uh, uh, moved forward with is they were, they're covering travel expenses. Yeah. So yeah. they could they could have covered the uh, the bus. I was going to carry them all down. Yeah, I mean so. that's costs almost nothing really. It's, so th this is this is just hysterical to watch. Quite frankly, I'm kind of surprised that that MLS didn't push. For a rule change that now that they got 11 MLS Next Pro teams in here, that they would have said, hey, we want all of our games to be on the road. 
Yeah. Because nice it's, well. it's it, you're, all these early, the, the third divisions, the fourth division teams that are, that are, that are playing MLS next pro the first and ra- second rounds. They're not going to bring in people. Nobody's going to come and watch those games. No, even no if, one's even if the game was on a Saturday, nobody's gonna go and watch those games. No one is going to go watch MLS Next Pro. Period. Like, okay, no one is an exaggeration before somebody gets their nuts in a tie in a knot, mm-hmm. but it's pretty close to no one. Whereas if that game's played in Indy, it's a packed stadium. Packed, absolutely packed. So there you go. So <laughs> Fumar is asking, you thought the lower teams hosted automatically in the open cup. They do. They That's do. why Chicago's hosting all these matches because they host Chicago a, two. Chicago uh, yeah. two. I'll say the only match that they hosted against the lower team so far has been the uh, Chicago City FC, which is a Division Four team, I believe. Wait, hold on. Yeah, they were a USL two team, so they're amateurs. It's like Division Four right at the point. Yeah. Uh, right Madison uh, Ford Madison would have been Division Three as well, uh, but. I don't know how they how they gauge that by any means, but then uh, Indy Eleven's a Division Two team, therefore right. Chicago's hosting them. So, yep. Okay, well, that's what you get when you're so <laughs> fucking cheap. You won't pay up a few bucks to stay in USL, hmm. where your teams, your group of younger younger men, younger boys, whatever you want to call them, hairless wonders, get to play against real men. Now this is their only opportunity to play. And over half the teams only played one game. And they were out because they're awful. And they got beat by amateur teams, just like Seb said. So uh, there you go. Let's talk about this uh, U15 roster. This is uh, an interesting group of uh, MLS Academy players. Uh, Not a single player from a non-MLS Academy, first off. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, I know that was, do we we scout any other teams? (laughs) I mean, that's what the criticism was. Um, I think I saw one of the, the brothers of the three, four, three guys in there saying, well, this just means they didn't even give the other academies a chance. None of, none of the MLS academies are getting scouted properly because he says, "I, I can guarantee you there are great players in the other academies. And the reason they're still in those academies, they didn't want to sell sign MLS contracts. And so they're going to stay in those academies and then they're going to go play in USL. And then they're going to go move abroad if that's the next option. But um, yeah, the whole idea that only MLS academies are developing good players. I'm not finding that a little hard to believe. Um, I'm sure there's a few out there, handful out there that are, probably really exceptional players that are getting overlooked would be my guess Um, because they're not in an MLS Academy and say what you want about U S soccer, their ties to major league soccer are obvious at this point. They're obvious. So not a shocker, but I like this guy, or I should, I say, damn this guy, Ty Jones says lots of American names. What does that mean? What is an American name? Yeah, exactly. If your name's not like Iron Claw and you're not a Native American, none of your names are American names. All right. Like not Native American. Obviously, all these names are going to have be from backgrounds all over the place. I don't yeah. know exactly what an American name is. Smith? Anderson? Uh, What's an and Anderson wouldn't even be an. Well, uh, yeah, we- was that uh Christopher Cook over here from FC Dallas? We can't even take that because that's an English name. It is. <laughs> and if I could read the name of the players because it's so small, I can't. Um, I'll uh, I'll butcher it for you if you want. Yeah, let's try to. We got a uh, Keller a- Keller Abbott. Abbott's pretty general English standard last name. James Donaldson could be Scottish, could be English. Tobias not going to pronounce his Polish type name. All right, Chez- prob- whiskey. Probably well, Polish. And then whiskey in there. As if I, that's all Polish names, but it's clearly not there. So Yeah. P- very Polish name. Uh, Hugo Berg. How do you spell Berg? B-E-R-G. B-E-R-G. Berg. Probably Dutch or German. Edward Chadwick. That's Probably. English. That's very English. Very English. Uh, Nash uh, Dearman. Dearman. Probably some sort of German in there. More than likely. Yeah. Uh, so Gianmarco Di Noto. 
That's definitely Italian. That's a, yeah, <laughs> sounds Italian. Um, He's right. He, hey, Ty's exactly right. All these names, none of them are American. <laughs> there are none of these names none are American. Them. What the hell, man? Yeah, so that guy's just dumb. Like, if you're still walking around <laughs> these days going, yeah, man, that's a lot of American names in there. What the hell does that even mean, dumbass? Jesus. All right. That's all uh, I want to Fumar, really Fumar wanted to point out that I've got a targeted uh, Trump out of my uh, still here, my, my screen cap. No shit. It's, well, yeah, you, you no, that's mine. It's not my screen cap. That's the point. It's my screen cap. <laughs> so I guess they're targeting me. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure because I, I probably follow like I follow a lot of people on the left. I follow some people on the right. That's how I found the Marjorie Taylor Greene shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe that's not how I found it. I don't know. But, um, you know, I like to get my point of view. I like to see what everybody's up to. Everybody's up to. Not just all the guys in the middle. Those guys are pretty boring, actually, the guys in the middle. But I like to keep my tabs on everybody, see what they're talking about. Got to know who who you're, what you're looking at out there. You can't just yeah. look at, can't live in an echo chamber, people. All right, Wizard Dragon. I'm not sure that's a great name. <laughs> um, I thought Kevin Kevin Sullivan was being hyped up, but he didn't make the U15 roster. What I'm missing, I think he's on the U17. I don't think he's U15, anyways. Yeah, I think they're going on 16 at this point. They moved him up to the U17s already. So oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, we don't do politics on the show. Don't even ask me about politics here. <laughs> I, I've made whatever comments I've made before. And I think it's pretty clear that I there just don't like it, the establishment. Brian, I don't like Brian either party. Lawless takes. Is there that could go. that could be it? Lawless does a lot of pop politics stuff. He's very brave about that. Even though I may or may not agree with everything he says, that he's got a big pair of balls to be out here on Twitter saying it. Because honestly, he could just lose fifty percent of his audience, which is what probably happened to him. I'm sure there are fifty percent of people. Yeah, I mean, who are burning his jerseys and pissing on his pictures of him? He doesn't you know. care because he, he's he's spent like the last two decades at Fox, and unless he has, unless Fox is actively aiming to get rid of him, why does he care if he loses half of his Twitter audience? I guess so, but I mean, I made the point before. I was driving in the Butler University community, and I saw somebody with all these signs in the yard, and one of them said proud democrat and i thought what the fuck are you proud of and then I, if i would have seen the same sign in noblesville that said proud republican i'm gonna say what the fuck are you proud of what are either of you fuckers proud of that's my point of view and as deep as i'm gonna get on politics it's a uniparty everybody hold hands all right there you go hmm. i'm not gonna get any deeper because we don't have time and this is not a political show uh, my my political views and Brett's are quite complex, actually. Mm. Well, mine might be a little bit more complex than Brett's, but I, I'll let him speak for himself. Eric Winalda says, this is a problem. Uh, Lamin Yamal is now valued at $145 million. His value has increased by $134 million in the last six months. It's not surprising because of what he's done. Uh, why is it a problem? Why is Eric saying it's a problem? Is that too much money or money? Everything's uh, getting ridiculous. And at some point, at yeah. some point, you're either going to have just a handful of super clubs around Europe, or the market values, the values are going to have to level off and probably drop a bit at some point. Yeah, because I mean, there, I mean, how, I mean, I mean, I mean, how many teams at that point could could afford to get that transfer right there? Yeah, I really mean, limit, you're really limiting the teams you can go to. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't, and I've got, I would, I would guess that nobody's going to be able or willing to pay that much. Not Liverpool, certainly not. Man United probably should spend it, but they're not going to. Um, Chelsea might, because <laughs> Chelsea are going to sell off like 11 of the players they just can buy. And then they're going to go hunting again for new players, right? Mm -hmm. But and they are they are willing to overpay. They overpay for everything. So I don't know. Um, yeah, Chelsea's at the top of that list, right? Yeah, I think Chelsea's pretty much the only one you can depend on to overspend yeah. to that degree. Bayern can't because of the rules of, um, of of spending in the Bundesliga. They could never afford that. That's way too much. I'm so. sorry, but I mean, 
for what he can provide at 134 mil, I, I think you could you could almost get like five to eight really really good players that'll make your team that much better. Oh, I agree. You could, yeah, maybe even more. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just saying that seems uh, a wee bit excessive. It seems a bit much, but he's a great player, and sure. he's what 17? Did he didn't he just turn 17? It's just disgusting how good he is already, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, going to be probably at Barca for a long, long time, more than likely. I don't see him going anywhere. Um, I'm sure at some point Barca, with their financial situation, would consider selling him, maybe. There you go. The Saudis can afford any player. <laughs> That's true. But listen, you go play in the Saudi League, what happens to you? You disappear. You disappear. Like the handful of people that watch the Saudi League, which the Saudis don't even watch, by the way. Like their attendance is at an all time low, even though the league spent more money than you've ever spent before. That's like live golf. Who watches live golf? I don't even know where to watch it, even if I wanted to watch it. I'm watching DeChambeau leading the Masters today. When I get home, I'm like, DeChambeau, dude, where has that guy been? Oh, yeah, live. I haven't heard his name, has, don't know any of his results. Haven't, and then you got. The other guys that are there, John, uh, whatever, Rom, he went. I don't even – I forgot he existed. The same thing will happen to you if you go play soccer in Saudi Arabia for a few years. People will forget you exist. I mean, there's nobody watching. So Maybe it's possible – that, and I, I've already uh, deleted the, uh, the tweet, but it's possible that that tweet was a typo, and instead of 175 mil, it was supposed to just be 75, as, as BMR mentions here. Yeah, no, I mean, it would make more sense. And by the way, I wouldn't listen to what, like, say, Barca value him at. I would just, I would stick with transfer market because they're generally pretty good and they make their adjustments and they actually tend to be more accurate once the transfer is done. Um, so there you go. Scorpion Lair is like, fuck the show without Brett. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There were, there were a couple comments at the beginning of the show before it started. It's like, I'm only here. I'm only here because Brett's back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here to see Brett. It's kind of painful, but well, yes. That was the thing. I made the comment, and uh, I was I was uh, watching the shows and in the live chat for the uh, for the two shows, and um, somebody was, had mentioned like uh, like, oh, this is this is it's something about you, are you doing it solo? And I'm like, guys, there's no chance in hell that I could do a show solo. Maybe with given time, I could, but it would be boring as fuck. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, that, I don't that, know. That, that's that, that's the problem. I mean, all of our live streams would literally be thirty minutes long because at that point, why would you ever go longer than thirty minutes just by ourselves? That's got to be tough. And I mean, I know you did it though. I stretched it a little. It. Yeah, I did. But I'm a motor mouth, and I can't. You no, know, I can't shut up. So there. Yeah, you, you get. Well, you went through like a comment uh, uh, portion of the of the show where like for like thirty minutes you were just pulling up comments and talking about the the comment for. Uh, comment on the show and you were yeah. talking about that for like a couple minutes at a time to go to the next comment talk about that a couple minutes which still worked i mean it's still a fun show to watch no i mean i had fun and if other people had fun that's all that really matters you know yeah. sorry i know you and scorpion and larry have this <laughs> tight relationship that, that i'm not a part of and of course i blocked him on twitter so he hates me but i mean there's only so much i can listen to before i go eh i don't need that uh, I don't. I didn't mean to block you though, Larry. I meant to mute you. Meant to you. mute you, yeah. Because I like just gets you muted and blocked, so you should just go in and block him. I didn't know the difference, so I, mean, I should have known the difference when I was doing it, but I probably didn't do a good job. So sorry, Larry. I will unblock you and just have you muted for, and then you can just keep talking to Brett. That that's what I recommend. <laughs> yeah. Just keep talking to Brett. All right. Um, Let's see here. Go ahead. Uh, what do we got here? Max Bredos. Yeah. Uh, our buddy says, can you imagine being interviewed by Alessandro Del Piero? It's supposed to be in reverse. Dortmund coach in Terzic couldn't resist. Don't blame him. Yeah, I mean, he's a legend. He's a fucking legend. Well, let's see what they talk about here real quick. We, we okay. take a result that we are not really happy with, but we are also not very disappointed with to Dortmund. 
And then we have a great opportunity to show that we are not only a team that plays 60 minutes good football, we are a team that is ready to play 90 or 120 minutes good football. And then we have the it's big, like man love job. going on here. I was wondering that too. They're both looking at each other's eyes and giggling. I know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm really attracted to you. Yeah, I'm really attracted to you too. <laughs> it's to go to the semifinals. Okay. Good luck. Thank See you, you in a week. So. See, yeah, right. We See you in 10 watch. minutes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you, you, you've been my contributor. We, we take him. <laughs> so he was starstruck there. He's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, Del Piero, I gotta get a selfie with him." I mean, listen, there players like Del Piero just don't come around very often. Sure, he's 100%. in legend. He was one of my favorite players too. One of mine, yeah. God, I mean, he was just so good. And, you know, it's not like he was amazingly physically gifted or anything like that, but he was like one of the highest IQ soccer players I've ever seen. And boy, could he shoot. Well, he you don't score that you shoot. don't score that many goals consistently and not be. I mean, and, and Serie A back then was a different league than what we're seeing now. So yeah. they kiss at the end, says Tony Martinez. <laughs> He should have said, I'll see you in 15 minutes. There's actually three kisses, one on each cheek and then one on the lips. Really? Yeah, was, no. there, was there tongue? <laughs> it cut was off. There... I didn't get to see it. No tongue? Okay. CBS <laughs> is like, we can't show that, guys. Come on. Because it, it, it looked like if that happened, there would be tongue involved. At least on Terzic's part. And, you know, Del Piero might go, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's too much there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like you too, but hey, you know, let's not push it, buddy. All right, what else you got? So yeah, did you watch the uh, Bayern Munich Arsenal game? Um, not the whole thing. I watched chunks. There's a big uh, drama debacle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I it a handball or wasn't it a handball? I saw um, gr um, Craig Burley and um, who's the um, the Norwegian guy go at it because the Norwegian guy I always forget his name because it's a weird name. Um, and he's like, Hey, the rules are the rules, man. You can't pick up the fucking ball once the whistle's blown. You can't just be like, Oops, I picked it up and start up again. And then Craig's like, Yeah, I mean, maybe he didn't hear the whistle. Maybe he got confused temporarily. You're really going to give him an in Craig, Craig's watching the uh CBS report because that's literally the same argument they're making here. Some people are making here. Yeah. Here. I mean, either you got the rules or the rules. And, um, and, and, or, or your Jan, thank you, Fumar Jan. And then his last name's like, it's now you like, sound like a Muppet. It's like the Norwegian chef, the Swedish <laughs> chef, <laughs> but he's Norwegian. Right. Um, yeah. and yeah, so Jan's all grumpy and grouchy and yelling at Craig and Craig's, you know, I think for the most part, taking it pretty well. And just said, yeah, come on. That's a little ridiculous. You're going to give them an indirect free kick? Well, let's see what uh, what's her face, the daughter of uh, what's his face, the <laughs> umpire. Well, I was like, <laughs> what, a, what a weird way to word that. Like, uh, what's her face, daughter of what's his face? I mean, that, that, how many what's her faces out there are, are the daughters of what's his faces? Uncle, uncle, right? Uh, she's the daughter of the uncle. <laughs> that sounds weird, too. <laughs> They've been watching our show, apparently, you know. <laughs> Little incestual things going on there. Uh, <laughs> so uncle from uncle to uncle, and this is the younger uncle, and she works somewhere. I don't know where in particular, but she's hired by CBS to come in and provide the referee's point of view. I guess you're going to play it. There was another decision that happened earlier from a goal kick by Arsenal in which Gabriel <coughs> handled the ball inside the box. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so, you know, you can see and you can kind of feel it, right? So the... It's not a... That's a painting of Ruth Bader Ginzer. Get, uh, Ruth Bader... Oh, what's her last name? Ruth Bader... The Supreme Court Justice. Supreme Court. Yeah. Hmm. That's an interesting photo I have back there. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty Ginsburg. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ginsburg. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can see and you can kind of feel it, right? So the referee issued the whistle... For so I'm going to have to pause it periodically through this because I don't want to get dinged by, um, I guess, CBS or uh, UEFA or whatever. Right. Whoever's going to fuck us over in that end. 
Well, yeah. All right, so th this is actually after the pass. I'm sure they're oh, going to go back and take, show the taken, whole thing here in a second. Uh, the keeper initially played it. That's player here picked the ball up and then played it back in the keeper. Did not realize that the goal that the referee had initiated. So I guess here, one thing I would say is uh, if if they didn't think that there was a goof there, like if the goalkeeper didn't think that his defender goofed, why did he pause? It's not like the ref was blowing the whistle. You just had Byron players all like shake their hands like this. Yeah. But he sat there like, is he going to blow the whistle or is he not going to blow the whistle? Is he going to blow the whistle or not blow the whistle? And then they play. So I think the, I think I think Arsenal's goalkeeper even sat there and goes like, oh Jesus Christ, what the hell is that, dude? Would you why'd you just do that? Yeah. Oh, you're and then you're just gonna pass it play back to cool. me. Play it off cool. And then you're just gonna pass it back to me anyhow. This was planned out. This is stupid. <laughs> but you know, I, I think it's a whole lot about nothing, honestly. I, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I just I, listen, I understand it. It's like when you watch do people do the throw-ins. They step all over their toes, go over the line all the time. That never gets called. Never. And how about the guys who have the ball in their hands on the sideline and they're going to do a throw in instead of throwing it in? They underhand lob it to another guy who's on the pitch and say, hey, How about you throw it instead? That's an illegal throw. Well, well, the underhand, yeah, well, yes. There, but that would, there'd be intent there because he is getting in the ball to throw it in because it's not like he threw it in because. The goalkeeper put it down for a goal kick, and then he kicked it. The ball, and they're gonna have to show replay because they don't, they don't, they cut it off early. The ball goes like a yard off the box. The defender goes and collects it, brings it back, and then does a goal kick again. It's a bit different because that was already set up. It'd be like I was gonna make this argument because it'd be like him going back here to do the throwing, and then saying, "Oh, Paul over there wants to do the throwing," so then he just throws him the ball like that, and the guy picks it up. Because then well, that would get called, wouldn't it? Technically, I see, and I see it all the time is people are going to do a throw-in. They decide not to do the throw-in, and then they turn around and lob it underhand to somebody on Whatever. the pitch, on Whatever. the pitch. Well, then, so that's, that, I'm, saying, I'm saying that it's clear that that was not a throw-in. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Technically, be, that player cannot catch the ball on the pitch, then run off the field, and then throw it back in again because the other guy delivering the underhand pass to him on the field of play is an illegal throw in. He's not allowed to catch it and then run over the line and then throw it again. But they let that go constantly. Again, again, the, the intent there, it, it's 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 clear and cut intent that he's tossing the ball to another player to take the throw. When you set a goal kick down on the line to take the goal kick, and yep. then you kick it forward off the box, like forward, like that as you're allowed to do here, and then you reach over and grab it and kick it. It doesn't have the same look to it. it. Doesn't have the same intent. Now, mind you, he may have been saying, "Hey, you take the goal kick," and he kicks it over to him. Whatever. That's that might have been his intent, but it's a bit different. It, like I said, it'd be the equivalent of him reaching back for the throw in and saying, "Like, oh, Paul wants to take," it and then just throws it over to him, and then he takes the throw in. That would get called day every day. If it were overhand, yes, overhead. Okay, I guess, but. Again, to me, it is what it is. A guy was a nimrod. He should never have. There's no reason to bend over and pick up the ball anyhow. That was dumb. He could have placed the ball there with his feet. I don't know why he's bending over to pick up the ball. He's got like a hand fetish or something. Anyhow, I'd like to see consistency, but I just think in this case, the ref was best just to just go, ah, yeah, that was, he just fucked up. And I'm not going to call him. Otherwise, they get an indirect free kick. Right there in what front a, of the goal. What a hor what a horrible position to be in as a as a ref though in that situation because you yeah. might have sympathy and say, oh well, he was. I mean, he's clearly going to take the goal kick here, but like, it's one of those. It's a, it's a it's a stupid thing because then he ends up kicking the goal kick right back to the goalkeeper anyways. Mm. What's the fucking point? But yeah. uh, but then you have an entire you have an entire team and you'll have other other people will be calling you out like we're seeing on all these other shows. Saying that should have been called because that's the rules of the game. He took a goal kick. The guy handled the ball in the box. Yeah, I guess. I I don't. It just. I, I'm just. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Either way, I'm glad they didn't call it because that would have been crazy. That would have been a crazy thing to do at that point in the game, that late in the game. I just think that would have been a bad mistake. So I want. I want to continue playing because I want. Uh, <laughs> there was one thing that she does end up saying that I wanted to address as well here. Okay. 
So at the beginning of that goal kick. So Tuchel right now is complaining and saying that a penalty should have been given I'm for a handling offense here in this situation. So at this point, the goalkeeper. I got to keep pausing because it, it keeps showing the stupid game. Come back I don't, to the audience. I don't even know what that dude's thinking, picking up that ball. It was, it was dumb. He's a I mean, stupid how, how, idiot. How often, well, how often do we normally grab that anyways? Usually, wouldn't he just use his feet to drag it back and put it on the box? On the I, that's what I said is he has some sort of handling fetish. He's got to pick up the ball and put it in his hands. Even just to be safe, don't pick it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus, it's just the guy's a doofus. Let's just put it that way. He's a yeah. dumbass to put the ref in that situation, to put his team and teammates in that situation. He can only thank the refs. Kiss, go over and kiss the, the freaking refs and testicles because without that, he what he did was literally illegal. Yeah. So keeper has played trying the ball to get to that point where she says it. Picked it up, placed it, believing that the goal kick has still not yet been taken, and then they initiated on this. Tuchel's arguing that a penalty should have been given at the last. Hurry up, the uncle! Get to the Many fucking of them point. Are claiming that it is the referee did blow the whistle. <laughs> However. If you are arguing for this to be a penalty kick with all due respect, you hate football. Because here we have to use common sense and law 18. At no point was any advantage taken away from Byron in this situation. Okay, so no advantage was taken away from Byron. I've got a thing. Let's say it's going out for, let's just say the ball is in the corner and the guy handles it. And it's not even in the box, just anywhere in the field. And the ball, he handles, he handles the ball, a normal handball. How, I mean, there's nobody around him, nobody pressing him or anything like that. He's got miles in space. Would a handball still not be called? You see it all the time, though, in free kicks. One guy's going to, you know, kicks it over to another guy to take it. He picks it up. And you're like, no, that guy just started to play. What the hell? That ball was settled. It was not rolling anymore. And he kicked it to somebody else who then picked it up and reset it. See it all the time. So I guess it's about... The uh, not what do they call that? The spirit of the game. That rule, I can't remember. I don't know. She brings it up, but it, it's really up to the ref to use some common sense about the new one. General spirit of the game. So, full time official we says as a ref, it's common practice there. The ref has complete authority over it if and when a restart can be retaken. Yeah. So I mean, to your point, that would be him simply saying, "Well, he he fucked up clearly." Retake the kick. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Again, I, yeah. I, I have no, I have no dog in this fight. I don't either. So I, I really just, don't care. Fun, it's fun. It's fun. I, I think it's kind of fun just to banter back and forth about it. Um, <clears throat> but I honestly don't think it's ever going to happen to my any of my teams, whether national team or club team. I mean, I just never seen something. I hope nobody's that dumb. <laughs> never really seen anything called like that before like i said on the throw-ins you never see it called on uh just free kicks you never see it called when guys are like clearly rehandling a ball that could be determined already in play or you know based on the whistle or based on whatever the flow of the game you see people handle it why people are handling the ball as much as they do i don't know you want to go handle balls Go home to your apartment in the privacy of your own home and play with your own nutsack. But out on the field, you don't need to be picking up the ball unless you're doing a throw-in. Otherwise, and you're or you're a goalkeeper. I don't know why this guy got to bend over and grab the ball. It's absolutely unnecessary either way. Yeah. Anyhow, well, we don't have to watch it all. The uh, the um. In studio cast did not agree with her take, and basically said that it should have been it should have been called. And then, and then she went back on the front saying that you know like well, you know like well it didn't take any advantage away from Byron. And uh, I think it was Charlie who pointed out that Byron was getting ready to press on that goal kick, and then the so, handball came in. So it did. so if another player, an Arsenal player, walked over to a Byron player whipped out his cock and balls and pissed on the guy's leg. All right. And that didn't really affect the guy in any way. It didn't injure the Byron player. It didn't give Arsenal any advantage. Byron didn't lose any advantage. He's just got a wet leg. That's, that's still a foul. That's still a foul. I'm sorry. It is. Mm. You can't whip out your cock and balls and pee on somebody. I was wondering See, where you're going to go with that. You can't. The whole advantage thing works up to a point. 
but that's not how you need to look at every single rule. Sometimes you just need to follow the fucking rules of the game. Advantage or not advantage, just follow the rules. Well, the goal the goalkeeper kicked to the center back who grabbed the ball and ran 20 yards up the field, <laughs> then put it down. It didn't really help him much because he ended up kicking back to the goalkeeper, so they didn't really gain an advantage. Even though he advanced the ball 20 yards in his arms, in his hands, so it's not just about whether somebody gains advantage or not. That's clearly um, Im- you know, an improper use of the hands. So, eh, well, but and, whatever. And what, 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 here's another example. What if, uh, you know, you're, you're being pressed at the halfway and your defender kicks it back 30 yards to your goalkeeper and the goalkeeper picks it up in the box. You're not taking any advantage away. What is, what is the opposition opposite team really going to be able to do to you? Right. But I mean, it's still, still I mean, against the rules. Yeah. I mean, it's only a disadvantage when you have somebody like Turner in goal who can't use his feet, but... I'm just saying her argument about, well, it didn't give him an advantage or it didn't help give him a disadvantage, that yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At some point, that doesn't matter. Now, if you want to say the spirit of the laws, of the rules, fine. There, That one you can whip out. That's in the rule book. And that is up to the ref's discretion. Um, you don't think getting pissed on would affect you? Um... I mean, it might affect some people psychologically, maybe, and um, you might want to beat them up, uh, but technically, no, not technically. In your case, Derek, that is an improper use of cock and balls. <laughs> it is on the field, but... Brooks anyway. McAdams wants to know if uh, if the ref can pee on players. I think the ref does have the discretion of doing that. Because there's not a ref of the refs, right? Unless he gets after the game, he might get in trouble with the referees' association. Other than that, I don't know who can stop him from just pissing all over the place if he wanted to. Uh, the idea of gaining an advantage is a point about the spirit or philosophy behind the law. Well, that's what I'm saying. But then say the spirit. Don't say advantage and disadvantage because, honestly, you can do a lot of illegal things that don't give your team an advantage. So... Uh, that don't give the other team a disadvantage, but doesn't give your team an advantage. You can do all kinds of illegal things. So let's just stick with the spirit of the, the rules, the spirit of the law of the rules. I think that's better. Now, we didn't we didn't get to play this last time, which really irritated me because it wouldn't work for me. Uh, the sound wouldn't work. So we're going to play it again, th- this show. I like the, uh, the, the, video, the video is titled uh, Burhalter Idiocy. Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't think of a better name for it. <laughs> Boom! Boom! This is what we're trying to do together, right? like change soccer in America forever. Oh God! Who's up for that challenge, raise your hand. Oh no! It's still. Derek, what does that mean? You're not up for Derek to, to beat the big teams to compete with the best. To compete with the big teams. Uh, How does he put that again? The best. How does he put that again? Ooh, who's up? Who's up for that? Raise your hands. Who's up for that? Ever. Who's up for that challenge? Raise your hand. Ah! Oh, vomit! Vomit! What does that mean, Brendan? To, to to beat the big teams, to compete with the best. It means getting laid a lot, man. Bro, <laughs> bro. Gets, hey, bro. It means getting laid a lot, man. <laughs> All right, bro. That's what it means to me. Well, Brendan, you couldn't be more wrong. I was talking about soccer, not life. Oh, bro, my bad. Bro. Yeah. I mean, that's it's such a demeaning. Bro, bro, bro. Fucking... soccer is life. <laughs> that is like, I am Mr. <laughs> fucking know-it-all, and I'm Mr. Professor up here, and I'm waxing lyrical according to me. Cause I'm the coach and you got to sit here and take it. You little bitches. And you're going to answer my questions. Just <laughs> like I can tell you to raise your fucking hand. Hey, you in the back, raise your fucking hand. Everybody should be raising their hand higher. I want to see you raise your hand higher because all of them are kind of like, <laughs> uh-huh. judgmental deity says, uh, Oh my God, poor Tillman looking like he's rethinking life. Yeah. Tillman's like, yeah, he put up a hand like this. Uh-huh. No, no, it's Tillman's looking at Brendan going, thank goodness I keep telling Greg I don't know English. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he turned to he, he turned to somebody else, <laughs> one of the other German players, and was like, was los? You know, he's like, Scheiße, 
Ah, yeah, because uh, uh, this is uh, shit. This <laughs> is like, uh, what, what, what was Tillman saying? Uh, he, I believe he, uh, the translation may be wrong, but I believe he said you suck ass as a coach. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hey, but he, 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 he totally looks tuned out. And then everybody else is kind of like, okay, don't call me. Please don't call yeah. me. Well, that's what that's what Tillman's kind of looking like, looking down a little bit. <laughs> like, God, I swear to God, yeah. he calls me. I'm going to. Dude, this is so cringeworthy. And Mark, how are we going to do that? She goes gonna... right next to Brendan. God damn it. Fuck all the bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Winning. Winning. Yeah. That's it. He said winning. <laughs> I feel so bad for Mark in this situation. Like, I do too. Of, he, he ran with Brendan's answer, like, "Oh, we got to beat the big teams." Oh, how are you going to do that? Like, winning, score Winnie. more goals than they do. Oh, oh it's the worst leadership I have ever seen. See, but that was, that was Mark. Watch Mark's face when he when he's like, "How are you going to do that, Mark?" Well, I'll watch his face. He's he's, he's so like like deer in headlights. What the fuck does he want me to say here? These kids are not teenagers. So, some of these people have kids. Some of these guys are married. Some of these guys, they're all grown-ups now. Can you start treating them like grown-ups? And can we get rid of these stupid-ass slogans? Greg, can we? And U.S. Soccer, don't post these anymore. They make Greg look so fucking despicable as a person like a really despicable talk down to other people demean other people i mean it's the ultimate talking down to to guys who are playing in on big clubs big teams across the world with other coaches that are better than greg and they don't have to put up with this you know they don't have to put up this yep. with up with the shit their club teams and now they come to this and they got to watch a slide uh, a slideshow by put together by Mr. Self Waxit himself, and who thinks he's somehow an intellectual, he couldn't be more anti intellectual because everything for Greg is broken down into a slogan that is anti intellectual. Quit pretending you're Socrates, asshole. All right, God, I hate this. <laughs> How are we gonna do that? Or is that he's like, Brandon's like, oh, you know, we gotta, gotta beat, beat and compete with the uh, the big teams, and yeah. Greg's like. Uh, Mark, how are we going to do that? And he goes, uh, well, seeing how we haven't done it yet, I would probably start with changing the system. <laughs> yeah, I would have been a good answer. <laughs> It'd be like, or he could say, yeah, we're going to fuck all their moms. That's I mean, what we're going to do. I mean, one of those moments where the sunglasses, you know, come down and the joint comes over. <laughs> he should have said, I don't know. What's the point of this stupid shit, Greg? <laughs> or he's just sitting there he's like, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. What was the question? What he could have said was, <laughs> is this some rhetorical ass question? Uh, but then he would never got to play for the team again. Hmm. Couldn't be a smart ass and be like, all right, is this some sort of rhetorical <laughs> bullshit question? And Greg would have been like, well, yeah, but can you answer it? Because they're filming. It's going to make me look better if you answer the question. All right, winning. Thank you, Mark. Winning, yes. It's This is impossible to watch this without getting your stomach <laughs> turning like i coached youth mm. squads i wouldn't teach i wouldn't talk down to them like this yeah i just wouldn't it's who's a good player who scores I, all the goals i taught high school for two years <laughs> there's no way i'm getting away with something like this 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 uh, fakey this rhetorical i mean this is just fake ass shit done by someone Who's absolutely because you start that presentation with a boom. No, the boom ain't you. You don't get to do the boom. You put up the slide and the players go, <laughs> but the players go, damn, that's them. Let them boom. But and it, you, was, it was like, yeah, it was like the most relaxed boom. She's like, click, boom. Yeah. That's the right. aura, the aura of this coach is repulsive. <laughs> and it just and I know everybody always talks about tack, especially I think Pete does the aura. The, the, the team inherits the aura and, and the general demeanor of the coach. And if this is what they're absorbing, and I know there are plenty of them who really like Greg. Well, I think he's A number one. I really he's, like that, Greg Berhalter. He's but calling in. They're going to say that because guess what? Greg keeps picking them to come on the team. That's why they love him. 
Like Pulisic has free reign to do whatever he wants. Of course, Pulisic's going to love him. You know, so you, sometimes you got to save players from themselves. All right. That's like, um, you know, it, players want to play when they're injured. Sometimes you have to save players from themselves. Sorry, buddy, mm -hmm. you're sitting this one out. Uh, and in this case, somebody at US Soccer needs to go, eh, we need to save the player from this guy because this guy's a clown. Oh, man. See, I was going to be like not this uh, critical about Greg and try to give him some, some more time, but I feel like we've given enough time. You know, I really I mean, do. It, it, it's, okay, it's okay to give him praise when he requires, when he earns it, but it's like, also fine to rip him a new one when he earns it. I mean, we he did great against Mexico. That was a good lineup. It was a good roster. It was a good game. Um, but then when I see something like this, it just reminds me of how pathetic he can be. And it's just infuriating to watch. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to... Do not panic. Do not panic. Cap them now. Cap them now. All Should right. Should actually be quad nap panic. Really? Because it's quad? Oh, yeah. Four countries. Von you know, we USA, we got England, Canada, and <laughs> the Philippines. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't worry about the Philippines, guys. That's not happening. Um, and it just depends on how good this kid turns out to be because I really don't think he's like, if he goes in place with the Philippines, he might get in a world cup because of the extended like 48 teams or 480 teams that now get into the, the world cup, but they're not going to go anywhere. So, I mean, why would you necessarily, unless it's in your heart, in your soul. Right. Um, but I believe he was born in Canada, wasn't he? He's the cousin of Canadian U-20 international finesse free, free, frilla. Um, the Canadian FA has not contacted the whole city youngster himself before because it's just too damn early to do it. It's too damn early. I mean, not for Canada. They should be calling him up because they should be in full ass panic because their future after this gen current generation they have it's looking shaky. It's looking shaky. I mean, they got a lot of old players on the Canadian national team. They desperately need whomever they can get. I'd say it's more likely he, he goes to place for Canada. Most likely. Yeah. More than likely, um, but we don't we don't need to panic yet, even though he's center back, right? I mean, it's funny because uh, you know it says the Canadian FA has not contacted him yet. And the person I pulled this from is a Canadian fan. And he goes, Yeah, because he's not good enough for the Canadian national team. It's yeah, what it was. So I had to look him up. I'm like, well, geez, I, I guess I don't know this player at all. Yeah, I've never heard of him. You know, it's never come up. So I guess his American guys are probably not that strong. But let's check out the current uh, season for him. A lot of red. He played I mean, uh, 44 minutes in the EFL is uh, in one EFL Cup match. And then he's injured. Injured? Is that all injured? Injured? No, not not, not in squad. squad. Okay. Probably youth, it's probably their youth, their youth teams. Well, you can look that up too. If you go down to the season, the 2023, 2024 season, and it'll have all the leagues he's played in. And then you can pick which league. So he's probably playing with the youth squads, be my guess. Mm. Not championship. It would be doesn't one of the, it. it doesn't have. Uh, I mean, 1920 was the last time he played in any form of youth tournament. Oh, so he's just on the big boy squad, and he's just not playing. No. Um, and I'm wrong. He's not a center back. He's a midfielder slash striker. winger slash striker. Yeah, I mean, listen, go ahead. You want to panic. If you're Canada, you might want to look at him if you're um, U.S. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> what's he doing? I mean, if, he, if he's if – he, if, I mean, if you're Canada, absolutely give him a call up. <laughs> I mean, come on now. How old was he? <clears throat> um, I it's bounced off of the thing. BMR says he's born in San Diego. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Well, we don't need him. I don't want to pull him up again. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, yeah. Nope. No doing that panic there at all. <clears throat> Still a long ways for him to figure out, you know, whether or not he's even a good player or not. Or um, not. Could look like or not. 
Yep, I imagine maybe end up playing for uh, Toronto or uh, or uh, any of the uh, Canadian teams here shortly. Could end up in the Canadian Premier League, for all we know, or USL. Yeah, he's not like he's killing it for Hull City. True, true, true. Okay, yep. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yep. Next. Transfer news, transfer news. Who's getting mounted on transfer news? Who's getting over on transfer news? Transfer news. Everyone loves that transfer news. But me. Whatever. You know, I know some people throw shade at uh, yours over mine, but I, it, I thought the uh, transfer news has a little more catcher tune in this one. There's more people singing at the same time. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that, Brad. Uh, Bruce Munchen Gladbach, Asfjolein Stimme, Jordan Sipiachu, however they would say it there, Sipiachu. Um, yeah, so he's not coming back. Yep. End of the loan for Jordan. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it's they a loan. Always on, they could always get him on another loan, I guess. They want it's him a, back. Yeah, they could. They don't need to buy him. They could just loan him again. I, I mean, he's not starting as much now. Um, when he first got there, started every time he was healthy. And then they just won the last game or whatever. And Scally and Fox sat bench mm. all the way through the game until the very end. They came in for like, what, 10 minutes, nine minutes, whatever it was. So maybe they, they just think, yeah, we don't really need him. We we got him. We hoped he was going to kill it for us, but he hasn't exactly killed it for us. And so, no, we're not going to do the option to to purchase. He'll find another team to play for. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it. But oh, I, I absolutely think that he'll find another team. That's not a problem. I'm yeah. curious though. Let's just find out um, all the goal scorers on that team. So. I mean, he's saying he's not killing him, but he's doing just as good as everybody else as far as goal production. Yeah, but he's been starting every game, and the other strikers haven't. He's been taking their spot because they play a single center forward up top. So the other guys, while he's been starting, have been riding pine. So there's that to consider. And then, you know, they just scored. I mean, they just won without him and Scally, by the way, who is also sure. not having a great season. So... Yeah. I mean, Scally's not having a great season. P. Fox had like a medium in the middle of the road season, but that's not all his fault because Gladbach have had a hard time scoring goals this season in general. So it's not all on him. You know, it's not all on him. Okay. I don't disagree. Ferrera to Napoli. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, On Sergeant, Josh came off after 60 minutes with some quad tightness on Tuesday. It looked like something was wrong there. He is a doubt as he's not able to train today. Yeah, we'll see. I hope that's not, you know, it's not too serious. I mean, at least it was just tightness. You know, it didn't feel like he pulled anything. So mm-hmm. he should be back uh, more than likely. Man, what is it, what is it with uh, these American players and constantly getting injured? Yeah, it's been yeah, bad. It's going to be something. Something's different nowadays. Uh, yeah. when, we, when, when we were kids, did we just muscle through it, play through all these injuries? I mean, I never had any injuries, like quads or any. I only had the knee injury, and that was it. And that was like uh, and it, <laughs> that came when I was. I, my, I only had my knee injury too, and that came in my uh, whatever my early thirties. Yeah. So okay, well, mine happened when I was like uh, sixteen, mm. seventeen years old, and you know it affected everything I did, unfortunately. And there wasn't the magical surgery back then that they have now. Mm-hmm where they take tendons from other parts of your body where you don't need them and put them into your knee uh, as a replacement. Um, but then again, it probably wasn't just, it wasn't a tear. It was probably just like severely pulled because it did eventually go away, thankfully. But it took two years to go away. Like hmm. completely. It got slowly, 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 slowly better. Slowly. Um, the following highly hyped LA Galaxy products are looking like players who won't reach their potential. We've been saying this for some time. <clears throat> I mean, we've been saying this about a lot of these kids for some time. Alex mm-hmm. Mendez. Uh, I mean, he's your homeboy. I was going to say, surprised you didn't throw that at first, but yeah. 
<laughs> but he's a pine rider in Vizela in Portugal. So there's that. Uli Lanez is is he still eating Wiener Schnitzel on the sidelines for Wolfsburg? I think he is. Um, okay. Wasn't he at like St. Paul or something? No, he went to St. Poulton in oh. Aust Austria, where he did fine. But yeah, it looks like that's going down the tubes. Efren Alvarez, Twinkie Boy. We, I never, I as an Elegant Galaxy fan, even back when people were talking about how great it was, was like, what are people seeing? I don't get it. I really don't see it. I see a kid who's not that quick, not that fast. He has some technical ability. He's not small. That helps. But yeah. doesn't seem like a guy who's like, has what's any he even doing nowadays? He met in Mexico somewhere on a mm -hmm. club team, but where he doesn't play. So, yeah, I don't know, but I never bought into that one. I think the one thing that all of these guys have in common, or a lot of them, is the Clyburn brothers, as far as I understand it. Hmm. These are all Clyburn brother kids. Uh, Kobe Hernandez Foster, he's in the USL now. Uh, good luck to him. I think he's in Birmingham. Yeah, that's what so, I went to, yeah. Somebody said Birmingham, and I said, not the Birmingham in England, <laughs> to be really clear. <laughs> um Alex Alvarado, Mauricio Cuevas. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on. I was talking with the author of that book. Um, of which... is, Cuevas, is Cuevas still in uh, in Europe or did he come back? I have no idea where he's at. It was over like in Belgium or something like that, if I recall correctly. I knew there for a while. I don't know right now. All I got to say is that there's something going on here. All these players are quite technical, but... Maybe, like, as far as Mendez and Lannis go, they were not physical creatures. And a lot of the game is very physical. And unless your technical skills are messy-like or somewhere in that vicinity, you know, nobody can be messy except well, for messy right now, then if your lack of phys physicality and speed and mm -hmm. all the other things that you're missing aren't going to be – your skills are not going to be able to overcome all the missing things that you've got going on. Well, remember that all, all the hype around these kids came from the youth national teams. Right. Where they're playing against other youth nationals. <laughs> so right. uh, it's it's a bit different when you get up to playing with the big boys, which is why we were big, big protagonists for uh, uh, the two teams playing in USL. Yeah. That's a much better gauge than them playing a bunch of U23s every and year. The other odd thing, and I was talking to that author – and we, we were talking, this is while he's actually writing the book still. And I was reading the, um, his, you know, his the, uh, rough draft. And I'm like, well, one thing your book hasn't really pointed out, which I think is a really interesting thing you might want to look into. And of course, he didn't really have time at that point to do all that, go back and do all the research. I was like, it is the um, Hispanic and Latin players that have gone overseas, American dual nats. Um, that have had a really rough time succeeding. I don't. I said I don't know what that is or what that's all about, but it's just been an issue for so long, and now it's continuing. You know, we're seeing Lanes fail and Mendez fail. We're seeing Kobe Hernandez Foster, who is definitely highly rated by just about everybody and their mom, not succeed, and that's not even a size thing there, right? That's not a physicality mm -hmm. thing. He's he's an exceptionally physical character. So I don't know what's going on, and I just it's hard to explain, and maybe somebody needs to do some research on why this is an issue, um, because it shouldn't be. Uh, by the way, speaking of that, um, who was it? Richie Ledesma um, is back with the U21s and played 90 minutes for them on Tuesday. So it's not a comp I mean, complete disaster, because Ledesma could work out, although he's had so many good injuries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. But uh, we'll see. We'll stay tuned. But there's something going on here. But maybe the other common denominator is the Clivens for some of them. I don't know for sure. But, uh, yeah, it I is. Think, I think, I think uh, for the most part, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a size and physicality issue, I, I would think, personally. Because, I mean, watching, the, watching these kids play at a number of uh, youth levels and stuff like that, they have, they, have, mm -hmm. they have the skills. They have skills. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but then there's, you know, I mean, you're generally playing. You're, you'll be playing against. Uh, 
uh, guys who've come up through uh, stronger academies and uh, are good, you know, three, four, five inches taller than you, just right. muscling you off the ball, and all of a sudden, you know, like, well, we're going to put this other kid in, and then all of a sudden you just fizzle out. I Yeah, I mean, it is – and this kind of happened to Freddie to do, too. When he was, like, 15, he stopped growing. And, like, you, you look at – there are other players this happens to, but, like, Alex Mendez – Never grew much after 15 years old, for that matter. Either did, um, either did a Ledesma or even Uli Lanis. They just like 16, 17, they were done growing as physically as, as stature wise. And that's okay when you're playing other youth youngsters and they're about the same height you are, then your technical skill is going to make you, you know, overcome. And the fact you don't have to overcome because you're physically the same stature, but those kids go on and keep growing. Uh, but then that doesn't really work for somebody like Efren Alvarez, who's a larger mammal, not just because he's Twinkies, but uh, hmm. and Kobe Hernandez Foster, both who are physical specimens, at least Kobe is for certain. And so, yeah, it's hard to say why this isn't working out for certain players. I, I don't know. I wish I had an answer. I, I mean, really even, even then, once you're highly touted and you got the physicality to back it up, um, even then, I mean, making it at that level is, is, uh, I wouldn't say a crapshoot, but it's a, it, it's, it's low, it's low, it's low numbers at that point. It's a low probability. It's, it's so close point, to a crapshoot. Yeah. So I mean, at that point, even though Kobe is a, you know, a, a, a you know, taller player who's highly touted, uh, uh, is Kobe the center back? Yeah. Scorpion and Larry saying Kobe is a run. I don't remember him being that small. I really honestly don't. Um, and it could be false memories on my part, but I don't remember him being like five foot seven. I thought he he seems taller than that, than that to me. And I'm just going by, you know, watching him, fist, you know, play on the pitch. So he could be taller or shorter. I don't know. I'm verifying real quick. Okay. We're I verifying. Know, I don't know what the meat. Uh, What's that? That can be right. <laughs> what? Uh, transfer market has met uh, site is um, one. I guess the comma is that more or less a period, but one comma seven three meter. What is it? One seventy three. Yeah, yeah, that's not tall. No, it's like five foot six. If that's true. God, he must. He's a lot smaller than I thought he was. He's not. He can't be a uh, center back. Then he's. Uh, but he's not. A isn't he? It's not a, he doesn't come off. Am I, am I thinking of a different uh, kid here? You might be. Who's I the one know. that went to France that went from Orange County? Oh, that's Kobe Henry. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of then. Yeah, you've got them confused before. <laughs> Happens. So, it's not going to be the last time either, Tarek. So BMR says that's about five foot eight and a half or five foot nine. So um, that's not that small. Five foot well, nine's not shrimpy dinky. I guess He's I don't not, know. I don't know if there's this, this thing, but I mean, that's 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 not a runt. All right, well, whatever. I, I don't I, know. I'm not getting into this. Oh, is he a runt or is he not? I'll just let it go. He's kind a of, runt. Kind of He's, is, yeah. If that's a, the case, he's a little runt. All right, what else we got? <clears throat> Wish we had the answers to all those. John J. Lapointe, who was supposed to come on our show, is the oh, only person. Yeah. Oh, Jake Jay John, right. Only person that's ever canceled on us the day of the show, the night of nah, the show. He didn't cancel. He had technical he, difficulties. So he said. So he said. <laughs> John Cohn, husband of Cindy Cohn, has received, well, a quarter of a million dollars, it looks like, for from USSF over four years. Uh, is that more than a quarter of a million dollars? I No, that's just a quarter of a million. Okay. Well, just, just about. It's a little over. I can't see where the period is uh, yeah. or whether that was a, a, a <laughs> that was, comma. If that was a second comma, then, yeah, we'd be really Yeah, I was like, 200. Oh, Lord. 260. Yeah. Um, anyhow, uh, but that wouldn't work anyhow, the way uh, commas work. Prove me wrong that this is not a conflict of interest when another source could have been hired out for the same services who approved this transaction. Didn't you mention to me she's her husband's been there for some time? Though? Well, from what from what some uh, some people uh, defending USSF have mentioned on Twitter is that that uh, John has been working alongside USS Soccer for like two decades. Okay, 
I don't know I, though. I don't know what he does though. I, I have no clue. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, conflict of interests are happening all the time in all walks of life, especially U.S. soccer. I mean, hell, we have Greg Berhalter to prove that. Right. Listen, I'm sure there's even more of this, you know, buddy buddy <laughs> shit happening in U.S. soccer. Even though they not may not be related, breaking the American soccer ecosystem is rife with nepotism and cronyism. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you joking? You, no right. way, dude. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm all for calling it out when it's an issue. I just don't Tune know. Later, discuss that water is wet. That's uh, that's the funny um, Howard Cosell Super Bowl, whatever it was. We are here now. Monday Night Football. It's been raining all day, and I have to say. It's been very wet. The rain has is very wet. No shit, Howard. Really, <laughs> he he used to drink though during the games. People don't know that. Like he drank through every game. He had a like a whiskey and whatever all game long. The whole, never stopped sipping them. All right. Uh, so yeah, okay, John, Paul. If you find some other stuff that's a little bit more egregious, let us know. Um, I mean. From what I understand, and I'm not giving them any excuses, but I believe he was there before she was there. So um, in that case, I don't know how nepotistic this is, but certainly has a little bit of, I mean, there's cronyism all over U.S. soccer. So this would not be a shock at yeah. all. And I don't think it's anybody, and anybody's going to pay attention to it. I don't think, I think they're just like, oh yeah, that's shit just happens. That shit's happening all over the place. So, I'd, I'd uh, hire my significant other too. Yeah, Winston Churchill was drunk off his ass every day too. That is true, Fumar. So those speeches where you hear him, "They'll fight him in the ocean," "They'll fight him in the sea." It's not just because he had like a lisp, right? He is drunk constantly. In fact, there's one guys on YouTube that try to take his drinking schedule, his daily drinking schedule. And do exactly what he did. And they were passed out by like 4 o'clock. Right? They were done. 4 p.m. They were done. And Churchill used to drink way into the night. Way longer into the night. Mm. You know? And then wake up early. So some people can do that shit. Some people cannot. Um, I guess his tolerance level was really high. I just watched another video uh, about the history of Churchill by, I guess it's called his name's tick t-i-k anyhow and the title of it is winston churchill was an idiot <laughs> hmm. yeah it's really interesting perspective and way to look at it he did make a lot of blunders during world war ii that nobody really discussed so um interesting other new kind of way to look at it i try to watch you know oh winston churchill is a fucking god those videos and winston Churchill is an idiot and then you know you kind of like mix and match and figure out where you stand um, historically, um, it's not as simple as like those morons ago. Napoleon was the H man. No, he wasn't. All right. So anyhow, all right. Sorry, Brent. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, ah, B. Marcus, really, surprised you didn't bring up Napoleon yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's still got the chat running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I just brought it up. You caught me red handed. BMR. All right. So Derek. You had me pull this up because you're concerned <coughs> with uh, whether or not we uh, were going to cover the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, so, uh, I wanted to talk about the uh, Inter Inter Miami uh, match. They play Monterey. I watched it last night. Yes. yes, I've actually got I've actually got a uh, I've got footage of it right, real quick. I wanted to cover on this. So okay, pull, this is pulling it up right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's monterey totally going to town on uh inner miami yeah it was a little embarrassing um you know i don't know what you do at this point obviously we're not going to get more depth on these mls teams so there's just no way in the cluttered schedule that mls has created for themselves they're going to be able to compete but this clown show by calendar here I, our, I just, our third our third goalkeeper, by the way. That's scary. But, you know, during halftime, um, or was it after the game, Lawless, again, what's going on here with me and Lawless agreeing constantly? But um, Lawless is like, hey, this ticky-taka shit's all fine and well. 
But maybe if you're Miami, you just boot the can ball down the field on this one. What are you doing? What why why are we doing this? This is there's no one open. And even if this pass does, by the way, get through to the player it was intended for. Okay, and we'll play it in slow mo. Like that, what's he gonna do with it in that cluttered ass situation? You know? He's and he, receive it. I'm assuming that, is that who it's supposed to go to? Is that yes, it? right. Now, first of all, that player, whoever it is, needs to be further to the right. Yes. And even if that that guy's not open, really. So who do you pass it to? Yes. The safe safe maneuver is straight over to to calendar's the, left. The best option would have been this right here. Or boot it the fuck <laughs> up the field. But unfortunately, guy in pink on the left side of calendar continues to walk towards. In fact, they're all walking. Both guys on the out wider walking. So it's not all on calendar, but man, just kick kick the ball down the field, kick it out of bounds. I don't care. But don't give the fucking ball away to Vasquez, which is what he does. I mean, like that's just horrendous. <laughs> that is horrendous. Just boot it out of bounds. Now, I will say both of the wide players here for Inter Miami don't do their job. They don't run into open space for them. So they don't really make a pass out wide that easy. That pass out wide left is a long one with a guy lurking and the other guy's being lurked on too. So I don't know what you're doing. You just boot that shit well, out. Yeah, I mean, even this, it's <coughs> kind of jogging back this way anyways, but I mean, that pass has to come further out Yes, at an angle because that's, that's, that's threading the needle right here. That's just stupid. Stupidity. More than anything else, it's stupidity. And one thing you can't be as a goalkeeper keeper is you got to stay away from making really boneheaded, stupid, avoidable errors. Do no harm is your first, as a goalkeeper, that is your first job. Do no harm. Mm -hmm. Catch the shit you're supposed to catch. Stop the shit you're supposed to stop. Don't give the ball away. Boop the fucking ball away if you're in a tight spot. But what you don't do is hurt your own team. And that's what he did because after that, it was downhill. That game was all downhill from there. So as far as us competing with Mexican uh, league teams, Liga MX teams, yeah, I mean, it's looking like it's going to be really hard to do in a home and away series. Columbus got away with it. But Columbus might have the best coach in MLS, the best manager, all right? Because collectively, that that's not the best group of players, right? Columbus doesn't have the best roster. They have a solid roster with a very smart coach, a smart manager. Like I said, I don't know how much longer he's going to be coaching in MLS. Because if our teams across the pond, especially in France, I would be looking at this guy and going, eh, I think we better grab this guy. He's doing something special hmm. in MLS. Uh, did something Greg never could do, and that's win an MLS Cup with Columbus. There you are. Yeah. Uh, Skull Kid here. He goes, uh, I don't know, guys. A lot of teams would kill for a goalkeeper that can provide assists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's too bad on calendar. That was a really dumb. Oh. Uh, Gail? Sorry. We Sorry, Scorpion. I pulled this out of uh, context from uh, when we were talking about those uh, youth kids from the LA Galaxy uh, academies or whatever. Uh, I don't yeah. think I mean, he's not bringing up Gail as a, a, a boss yeah. as a, an academy kid from uh, from LA, but he did mention during that time period to stop stop watching kids play or stop hyping kids is what he's basically saying. Yeah, because Gail Abasa Monday and his other stable mate owned by the star had the same agents. They both failed miserably. So your agents can also put you in a really bad place. They can put mm -hmm. you on the wrong team, wrong country, not good for you, not good for your mentality. But then again, in some ways, you when you go to Europe, you got to understand you're going to be a fish out of water. You're going to have to bust your balls and you have to get over a lot. You're going to have to get over it. And if you're not willing to go over there knowing that those challenges are going to smash you straight in the face, you're going to pick yourself off the ground and continue on. You have to be extremely resilient when you go to Europe. Just ask Clint Dempsey. Just ask the guys that were resilient. Don't ask Landon Donovan. 
because he's the opposite. Landon's like, hey, fuck this shit. I'm not playing. I'm I'm leaving. And now later on, he did better at Everton. But, uh, and, you know, maybe in some way slightly redeemed himself. But that was a loan. You know, he didn't live there for three years. He was loaned there for half a season. So that's a little bit easier a transition to, to make because it's not long term. You're not away from your family as long. Of course, he had just gotten divorced before they ever did think so. Maybe actually he wanted to get away from home. This actually, he said that. He, he was very honest about it mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, MLS Don Garber against staging league games in other countries. Yeah, of course he is. Why, why wouldn't he be? Because with this new ruling by FIFA, all the Mexican teams can now have all these games played in the United States. Just like all their national team games are played in the United States, Mexico. Yeah. But well, gonna... it's funny. It's funny you bring that up because uh, Seb also brought that up. Oh, did he? I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. So Seb was... asked, uh, "Was Don Garber acting on U.S. Soccer's behalf or MLS's behalf when he flew to Zurich to lobby against La Liga games being played in the United States?" Shame these conflict of interest continue to lead in, uh, to litigation for U.S. Soccer. Well, the litigation thing, I don't shame, not shame, whatever. Uh, but, I mean, Don Garber's all about put, uh, protecting MLS, and that's it. He does not care about U.S. soccer. He does not care about the U.S. men's national team. That's all he, that's his job. Then he needs to get kicked off the board. He doesn't need to be on the U.S. soccer board anymore. Well, I guess he's a representative of MLS on the board. But as you say, he's got such massive influence in within U.S. soccer, which is totally obvious at this point, because J.D. Basson did little other than publicly whip out his penis and suck it, deep throat it, and gargle it, all right, in front of everyone, and then had nothing to say afterwards. He still made no actual public statement. Nobody saying, has. This is why I gargled um, Don's fucking man marbles. This <laughs> is why I did it. Don's dong. Yeah. I mean, shouldn't you have to come out and explain yourself? Because you basically told MLS, hey, go fuck off. you got to play in this league. And then you're like, but not really. <laughs> Just a small portion of you have to play yeah. in U.S. Open. And, yeah, so, you know, MLS, of course, is going to be against other leagues staging games in the United States because then you could have, like, the Premier League have, like, a handful of games across the season in New England, in the New England area. Quick flight. Is from there England. is there is there concern that uh, the financial pie mm. of U of soccer in the United States is a finite in that if uh, these other La Liga or EPL games come to the United States to play that there'll be less money to be spent on MLS? Absolutely, because as you, it is finite. Mm -hmm. It it is finite. Sure, like people are only going to spend so much money on soccer games a year. All right, and and you know if. You, you have to decide, okay, well, my other favorite team is Man United, and I live in New England, um, and I usually go to like 10 Revs games a year, but now, you know, Man United are coming, so I'll probably only go to seven Revs games this year, because that Man United ticket's expensive as fuck compared to the MLS ticket, so I'm going to have to cut down on my MLS games. I'm sure there's a matter of that. I think it's mostly the big worry is Liga MXs, honestly. That is the big worry mm -hmm. because they can play all over Southern California, all over Texas. They're going to be just totally scooping up the monies. All right. Cause there are plenty of fans of Liga MX's teams in uh, Southern United States, actually all over the United States. Now all over, you, can, you know, Chicago, New York, major metropolitan areas, Hell, you could almost play anywhere and you will get a good crowd of Mexican American fans to come out and watch Liga MX's teams. And a lot of those people, they moved here, they're Americans, but they still hold a, 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 a warm affinity for the teams of the places they used to live. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it scares the living. But Jesus, that is gone. That is for sure. For sure. Oh, show. Sure. I guess while we're talking about uh, MLS, let's stick with MLS. I got an article here from The Athletic talking about uh, MLS, uh, MLS plans to allow teams more spending flexibility with summer rule changes. 
Okay. What are those going to be? Do we know? we got a couple things here, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, currently teams with three senior um, <laughs> DPs. Dolly Parton fans. Dolly Parton's can have just one U22 player teams with two senior DPs and only one young DP or a DP that could be brought down with targeted allocation money. Tam can have up to three U22 players. Jesus, right, my knees. <laughs> well, are you saying that was a, a jumbled mess of words? Trying yeah. to trying to read that was painful. <laughs> yes, halfway through the the uh, statement, I just lost it. I'm just like, yeah. what are we talking about? The word DP <laughs> said five times in one sentence. Holy oh, Jesus! Man. What a so, mess. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so this is the new rule. Let me, I'll do it. Yeah, you do it. Under, I... under the new rules, teams can have either three Dolly Partons mm -hmm. and three U22 players, or they can have two Dolly Partons and four U22 players plus $2 million in, in GAM. So you can have yeah. three and three, or you can have two, four, and two million. They're really pushing the U22 thing, which is nice. Yes, I agree. How, how many really exceptional U22 players are available to MLS teams from not only this country, but around the world. Probably not that many. I'm, I'm sure you could pillage uh, some quality players from uh, South America and then aim to uh, sell them in a couple years. Isn't Ricky Puig one of those U22s from LA Galaxy? Doesn't he fit into that category? I mean... <clears throat> I have no idea what his age is. On, on occasion, I suppose you'll get lucky because, you know... Clearly, Ricky didn't work out the way he thought. Everybody thought he was going to work out of Barcelona. And so mm -hmm. this has just been a good way for him to make a point, make a statement that he is a good player. And so you're able to scoop him up. I don't know how many of those kind of kids are just laying around out there, though. You yeah. know, you might find him in Argentina somewhere. But I mean, a lot of teams don't want to sell off. Uh, they're su super great U22 players to the MLS because they're waiting to sell them off to a team that can spend a lot of money, maybe a Man U, a Chelsea, a Man City. But, you know, if if your player is that good, you're looking to sell them to one of the big boy teams. Mm -hmm. But then again, we'll see I don't know, how much money um, are some teams in MLS willing to spend? There are certain clubs that obviously aren't willing to spend, regardless of how you change the rules. The Revs ain't spending money, regardless. It's just not how they're going to run things. So yeah, but remember the uh, the U twenty two can't that be utilized on players like uh, Jesus Ferreira, who's under who would fit that description? Sure. How many Jesus Ferreras are there, though? But I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. I mean, you uh, I uh, I think Diego Gutierrez and I think uh, Luna. All signed U twenty two initiative. Okay, honor. but you you can really only name like a handful of these kind of kids within that range that are really playmakers for their team. Luna, um, Esmir Bakhtar Bakhtarovich is getting around that. Um, then you got the other Revs kid too, Buck, Buck <coughs> who just finally got a start um, after you know riding a lot of pine recently. But there aren't a whole lot of those younger players out there. Just kicking ass that you fit into the u22 category it's a nice idea theoretically we'll see if it works yeah, out but i mean my point i guess my point there would be is that it's a it's a way that mls could even keep some of the promising young players for an additional couple of years by throwing them into that category and getting sure. them off of the normal standard uh um um what are the salary caps so i don't know how much this is going to help um, oh, no, I think, the, uh, uh, the two million, the two million gam is going to be pretty nice. Think yeah, all the uh, all the uh, players and uh, I mean, you can uh, trade. Who the fuck? Who did we? Who did we end up trading off? Um, we got like we got we got a million gam from uh, Montreal from when we shipped off uh, Georgie Mihailovic. Yeah. Gutierrez fits into this U twenty two scheme. That, yeah. So, I mean, there are certainly players out there you could name. Seattle has one or two um, that this will help. Are those players game changers? Well, certainly Gutierrez is. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure all the young guys on Seattle have turned into game changers yet. So I don't know if this is going to help. Maybe if they were U23 or U24, but man, that might give you a little bit more flexibility there. And maybe that's what we need because young players are, young players are, they're not a dime a dozen. I mean, they're, you know, players that can, Brian Gutierrez is aren't all over MLS. They just don't exist. So that's my as, point. Uh, as the, uh, What's his name? Uh, Kermashi or whatever his name is for Inter Miami. Has he been playing this year? He's been injured. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. But that could be another one of those players that fit the bill. They could have used him last night. That is for sure. Because, so. yeah, you got five players that are extremely competent. And then, you know, another six, you're kind of like, eh, never heard of that one. Never heard of that guy. <laughs> never heard of that guy. So, uh, I mean, to the point where they had to get rid of Yedlin just to make the cut uh, of the salary cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not good. All right. Uh, well, uh, oh, I got to read another slide. Under current right, rules, you got this one. I'll get the next one. All right. Under current rules, MLS teams can convert up to 1.2 mil of any transfer loan revenue into general allocation money. Under the new rules, teams will be able to convert up to 3 million per year in transfer or loan revenue into GAM. I mean, it's a better. This is way better, right? More GAM. Um, it's more money equals mm -hmm. maybe the possibility to build more depth. But frankly, I think that teams should be able to spend all of the transfer money that they take in. It's like, MLS, you take your cut. I'll do whatever the fuck I want with my cut. Yeah. If I I just <laughs> earned $12 million in this last transfer window, I should be able to spend every fucking penny of it I yeah. want to. Because it's obviously money that my academy and my team has earned. Why are you telling me I can't spend it? That's bullshit. Well, I, I don't get that. Let them spend it all. I, I I don't know if you heard me do my aw when you read that dollar amount. Mm -hmm. Because you 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 abbreviated it down. I really wanted you to go one million two thousand two hundred thousand and fifteen five oh six. I'm like, what a what a very specific number. <laughs> First it, off. I don't even like, what, yeah. what what you know one point two you could easily just say that, but it's like that's one million two hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred and six dollars. Frankly, it was so ridiculous. I am like, I'm not reading that. <laughs> that's so that? stupid. Why is it that number anyhow? Yeah. Why don't we put the cents on there too? 506 and 33 cents. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'd be, one, it'd be one thing if there was a percentage, like it's uh 30, you can you can transfer 30% of the use. 30% of the transfer fee as a as GAM. And that makes sense you come up with such a weird number like this. Right. But if it's like, hey, I got whether you uh whether you sell a guy for three million or twenty-five million, you can only use one point two five, whatever, you know, on that. You, you know how GAM. we get these stupid numbers? We get to these stupid numbers because assholes like Kraft sitting in these meetings argue with the other owners, like the Seattle owners, who want to spend as much as possible, and they go back mm. and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and finally they're like, fuck it, we'll split we'll split the deal in the middle, right down the middle. All right, well, what's the middle? Somebody bust out a calculator, and that's how yeah. they get stupid fucking numbers like this. So that's I think somebody really fought for that extra six bucks, quite frankly. He's like, I'll give you $1,215,500. No, I want 506 Oh. Okay. And and sure. thirty seven cents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just All again, right. no, nothing's wrong with the rule. I like the fact they increase it because that's just going to help them pay down players' bills, and then you know they can get better players for that use. But theoretically, it's just, theoretically, yes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, the only main reason I really brought, I mean, I thought this is the new rule is I wanted to, I wanted you to read that stupid number. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't do uh, it. MLS will increase the number of contract buyouts available from one to two per season per team. Huh. So now teams can uh, teams can fuck up and you can buy out two of those contracts so you can get them off your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, apparently some apparently some people are pissed about this rule because it kind of gives uh, the teams who want to spend a lot of money, uh, you know buy out you know chance out we're not the teams who don't want to spend a lot of money we'll just ride it out yeah i mean is is, is shakiri really worth eight million is he really 
I mean, I mean that... he's he's pretty he's, he's he's he does he does some decent stuff from time to time, but I wouldn't say he does much more than what Guti brings. To the I team. don't know why there's a limit to buyouts in the first place. If you wanted to, you should be able to buy out every player contract that's on your goddamn roster because that would be in the agreement between you and the team. It would be in their contract already. It's already agreed upon. So if you have six players on your team with buyout clauses and you want to get rid of all six of them because they just played for a season and they were god awful, mm -hmm. then you, you should be able to buy them all out and say, here's your money, now go away. I don't understand. That's just usual the way shit happens in other leagues. Why is it limited to two? What? It, that's such a weird limitation. Yeah. Such a weird this weird shit. All right. But they, they doubled the number of buyouts. So that's nice, I guess. Yeah. We better get off MLS before people stop watching this show. Mm. <laughs> we got to educate. We got to educate, guys. Despite uh, this his U.S. men's national team brilliance, Gio Reyna has started, hasn't started a game for Nottingham Forest. Now, I will say this is this article came out probably just after the U.S. Uh, uh, Nations League. Yep. Because they, they use phrases later on in the in the uh, article talking about how there's like eight games left. Of course, now there's only six games left because they played right. two games within a short window. Right. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's <coughs> not necessarily dated, but it's a little it's like a week or so old, I'd imagine. Let's just see. March 28th. Yeah, about two weeks. Okay. But um, there's not a whole hell of a lot in this article. I, I do have a couple of slides, obviously, but um, I really wanted to talk about the last slide, and that's one – Leads up to the last one, but yeah. So okay, here's uh here's Geo talking about his time at Forest so far. He says the it's the adaptation period uh, in the Premier League, and then I was actually uh, then I was actually not available for a few games through sickness. So yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I think that's how he actually spoke. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hope so. I hope so. It's good uh, to get minutes here and back at Forest. We have a really important. Eight or nine games left. Now they're only six. Yeah. But this thing even, about, even more important. What is with him and the flu? He gets the flu a lot. He got that COVID. I think he got COVID twice. He got yeah. the flu uh, this season with Dortmund twice or once. But definitely not the first time he's had the flu. Oh, it always came out and just said like illness. Or <clears throat> Maybe he gets sinus infections and he's just like, you know, just horrifically uh caught up in bed you know i guess seems like he has a lot of those but all right maybe, maybe he's that shit flushed out maybe so uh maybe he's got you know uh allergies or something who knows um then in short reina has frequently found himself fourth or even fifth in the pecking order for a starting place at forest i don't think it's that deep the club may be battling relegation but their squad is more reflective of a mid-table team. I don't agree with that. The, the the lead up to this article or this 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 quote here was talking about how uh, obviously he's up against uh, Morgan Gibbs White, uh, and he's playing second fiddle to him at this point. Or we hope he's playing second fiddle to him. Who knows? Actually, Alanga. Um, yeah. You have, yeah. You have uh, you have uh, Hudson Adoy. You have Ivanka. You have uh, Hudson Adoy. You have Arigi. Right. So, I mean, that's four right there, so he's going to be fourth or fifth, depending. I mean, who knows? Well, and those really aren't his natural positions. His natural position is where Gibbs White plays. Yes. Um, so if you are going to play him out wide, that's fine. Um, I suppose you could try to squeeze him in somewhere else in the midfield, but, I mean, I don't know how that works out. I mean, this comes I'd down to this. I push Gibbs White back before I, uh, before I put Gio any further back. But, you know, Gibbs White is go good going forward, too. It's not like he's poor. And it isn't like they're not scoring. It's not like their offense sucks. Their defense sucks. Yeah. And um, so if you're Nuno and we said this last show, you're not going to pick up your chemistry and dump a, a new player in, you know, into the pot, if you will, the and stir them around and, and hope things don't get fucked up. Because mm -hmm. you can't afford to fuck up at all at this point. You're near the bottom of the table after the point penalties. So it's more complex than saying, A, he's not good enough. B, he doesn't try hard. He's doing horrible in training. All things of which we heard, which are all garbage. All right. But, you know, if he were messy, would he start? Yes, but he's not messy. He's not messy. Well, 
And again, so, again, yeah. when you're talking about wide, we talk about this not necessarily his natural position, but he is very well capable of playing that position. He doesn't fit Nuno's uh, wide role. No, he likes speedsters at wide. Ex- exactly, yes. So mm-hmm. that's never going to work. The only way you're going to see it at this point is if Gibbs is injured or if they're down goals and, they, and, he, and Nuno's actually smart, you play an, you play a true six and then just like Gibbs and uh, Reyna free reign through the midfield to go up and down, up and down as they see fit or need to. You would have to change the formation to figure out a way to play one holding midfielder and maybe play Gibbs, White, and um, Reyna as dual tens. But somebody's going to come off the pitch if you're squeezing Reyna on the pitch is what I'm saying. (laughs) Probably. Well, Yates could do. Yates Yates could probably play a holding mid spot, you know, uh, right behind those two. But then again, that's a very offensive formation, right? Yeah. Extremely offensive formation. And they're they're not going to play that offensively against, you know, 70% of the teams they're going to play. They got to they're going to play more conservative. Um. Well, the uh, three of the six teams are in the bottom five of the Premier League. So at that point, you'd think that they would look at that and go, well, we have to take it to them because we need these points against these teams. Because the yeah. other three are not going to be easy to get points on. Right. So those three games where they need to definitely get three points out of all three of those games, maybe we might see more Reyna because – but maybe we won't because I don't know if Nuno's going to switch up his formation. I don't know if he's going to throw, uh, you know, a, a monkey into the wrench or a wrench into the whatever. He's not going to want to screw up what is a pretty comfortable and good chemistry attacking side that he's got. His problem, if if Reyna was a center back and as high and quality of a center back as he is a midfielder, he'd be started at center back because they got problems back there. That's a major problem for them. The uh, defense in general has been poor. So we'll see what happens, but it was just a bad mood. Uh, bad move. <laughs> I'm going to be in a bad mood by the time the season's over because I'm going to have to eat that crow in the in Yeah, the Robert, I was asking when you're going to eat that. Actually, he asked it when you're going to eat that turkey, and then somebody corrected him. Yeah, it's probably going to be probably going to be chicken instead of actual real crow. But I did buy um, chicken you're wings. Gonna spray, you're going to spray paint it black? No, <laughs> I did buy chicken wings um, earlier this week, so I'm ready to cook it up and eat them live. Eat some wings on the show, and we'll just pretend oh, it's no, the worst. I love chicken wings, so yeah. it'll be just fine. But like, you know like, what? Like most people don't realize that the crow meat actually is in black, and it looks a lot like chicken. It does. It does. <laughs> How many people eat crow because there's not a lot of meat on that? But uh, Jack Pineda says for two dollars. He must have a lot of foreskin to circumcise. Gio Reyna? Probably. He probably does because uh, I don't know about a lot. Just probably the normal amount of foreskin would be my guess. I mean, unless he's some foreskin freak, whatever that means. Um, Okay, yeah, so that's that. I don't know what else to say about that. Oh, God, we got more. Throughout the negotiations, Forrest had pushed for an option to buy clause to be included in the transfer. But as the clock ticked down towards the end of the window, no such option could be agreed, and it ended up being a straight loan deal until the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't help us either. He's a hired gun. Like all these other guys playing, this is their job. And if they go down, they're fucked next season. All right? Many of them will have their salaries slashed. Not Reyna. He ain't going to be there. Because Dortmund would refuse to... Add a, a an option to buy. Yeah, and I I brought this one up because it kind of leads into the next one, but the uh, basically the uh, the support for his argument coming up here um, is that obviously uh, Nuno is going to want to play players who are going to have are going to be affected by these six games compared to say uh, Gia who's not because he's there's no option for buying. He's going back to Dortmund at the end of the season. No consequences. So why, why, why? Unless he, unless he's playing balls out above everybody else, why would I play him? And if he's playing well, but you have other players who are playing well that have had many games with each other, chemistry developed over the course of time. Why would you mess that up? So I'm going to bring him in when I see I need an option from Geo. Is right. what it's kind of alluding to here, and that's 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 fine. That's perfect. I think that's perfectly fine uh, argument to make there. 
But, but he does say, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead and say, but part, part of our argument about, hey, this is going to be a growing experience for Reyna, whether he gets a ton of playing time or not, because when he does play, he's going to have to play defense, which he has done. And we've seen he can do it. So that's a plus. Um, has it been a struggle to get on the pitch? Yes. That's not necessarily a plus, but he's also gone to a different team and experienced a different environment and experienced a different manager and experienced a different culture. That's all good, too. Um, now, those are the only two good things I can find so far, and that's stretching it, to be honest with you. Mm. Yeah. So uh, he follows it up with, by saying uh, he is not at force simply as a favor to his uh, influential agent, uh, Jorge Mendez, uh, who Reina signed with in January. Uh, Nuno may be a Mendez client, but it's uh, but it's not the case of accommodating a player just because of that. The Forest boss gen, gen, genuinely values the American. I would agree with that because otherwise he wouldn't play at all. Well, he barely plays at all. Well, the Chelsea player <laughs> that he had on loan, That's he very never, true. never well, played that guy. Well, no. Um, when did Nuno come to Forest? Did he come? Did he come in the uh, winter also? Wasn't no. uh, the previous coach there until that point? Yeah, he came during the winter because they let go of. I don't, I don't uh, think that, I don't think Nuno had the Chelsea player. They let go of what's his face. Um, but even so, well, it, it, like, uh, all right, so that might be true. I don't think that Nuno is adverse to playing. Um, you know, Cooper. Well, there we go. It's Cooper. Cooper. Uh, it's not that he's adverse to playing young players or players on loan. He just wants the players who have the most. You know, the they have the most in it to lose to be playing these games because he can depend on them to give absolute balls out 100% is what I think. And that makes sense because their jobs and their salaries are on the line if they drop. And like we said, with guys that are on loan, they don't face any consequences. They're going back to their mother club after the season. So then there's the chemistry aspect we spoke of. All important things you have to take into account as a coach. Um, I remember um, trying out for the baseball team in Carlisle, and there was absolutely no doubt I was one of the best three pitchers on that team. All right. But did I make the team? No, I did not. And one of the things that uh, one of the assistant coaches later told me later in the year was, well, it wasn't because you weren't good. It was because you're not going to be here next year. And there are other guys that are younger than you who are actually really talented that we needed to make sure they made the team because they're going to be with us their junior and senior years. And so we couldn't afford to bring you on the team when we knew you were gone in one year. Because the academy at Carlisle, by the way, where my dad went, which is the U.S. Military War College, is a one-year college program for lieutenant colonels and colonels who are going to become generals so they knew i was gone in 11 months i was gone and so they're like we just gotta be real dude gotta be real they didn't tell me this until way later in the season because the guy was also a pe coach he you know and i asked him i said why did i make the team you know and they told me and this is the same thing that goes for loan players right you got other guys that are way more committed to this program long term you got to play them because their their livelihood is on the line and Gio's livelihood is not. So yeah, I mean, I guess my argument to this whole thing is that if he did value, if he I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't value him as a player by any means. Sure he does. I don't, I don't, I mean, I know Forrest were probably aiming. I don't know how much of it was Nuno and how much of it was like the Forrest uh organization as a whole. We're probably trying to get him on a, with an option to buy because he is a promising player. Right. Um, but it's again, if if he really did value the player and he's a very uh he's a very creative minded midfielder who has pretty you know pretty 100 almost 100% well, 99% uh, passing accuracy so far this season for them which isn't a whole hell of a lot cuz he hasn't gotten a lot of playing time of course but he still does complete all of his passes right and creates opportunities from time to time doesn't lose the ball and you're down 3 to 1 with 20 30 minutes left why are you not bringing him in sooner yeah, that made no sense. So that made I, no it's, sense. It's it's stupid. It's the FA Cup. 
and you continue to play the same, the same, well, I guess about nine out of the 11 players you normally play in a game who really doesn't matter when you're really trying to stave off relegation. They knew they're probably going to lose points. Why are you going to tire out your players? Why not give some of the players who are, who are talented still, you know, use chance. your depth, use your depth. So I don't know. My, I guess my argument as a whole is that if you did value him, he, we, we would see him a little bit more right. than what we're seeing him now. And, and there, there's, they're clear cut chance. Like you're up, you're up three one. Do you really need to bring Rain at, at that point? You need to close out the game. But then he gets more, the most playing time in that match. Yeah, that was weird. So I, I, I don't know what to think at this point. I don't either. It seems know. like contradictory. Also, not, the other the other positive I would say before we leave this topic is yeah, at least he's not been injured and gotten injured. Because remember, that was one of the big points everybody is making. Oh, he's just gonna get hacked. He's injury prone. That. It's the argument we had with Tack, and that hasn't happened so far. He hasn't gotten clobbered. People don't realize this is not a small guy. He's six foot one. He's rather muscular. He's well built. He's not being pushed around. No injuries so far. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Okay, but I'm still going to eat crow because I thought it was going to be better than this. I honestly yeah. thought he was going to get 30 minutes gonna a happen. game. You're going to eat crow, and then all of a sudden he's going to start for like the final four games and keep him up. And no, like I'm, very not, I'm not eating crow until the season's over. Because if oh, he, he plays 30 minutes in the last six games, he averages 30 minutes, 25 minutes a game in the last six games. I'm going to consider that a success, honestly. Hmm. But he's got to be like 25, 30 minutes a game. If he gets like five minutes here and 10 minutes here for the rest of the season, yeah, I'm eating crow. I'm going to crow. So, yeah, MG, uh, MGW did get injured in the last match, and Reyna did not come on at that point. That's what was weird. Yeah. Um, so he came, a, Gibbs White came out, but he's also not on their current uh, injury list either right now. He, it so. wasn't anything serious. He also looked tired. He got a small knock. He'll be back. He'll be back is what I'm saying. So, I don't think that – yeah, it was weird, though. Fumar's right. He should have come on then. That's when I thought, oh, they're taking Gibbs out. Yeah, that's the spot he's vying for, right? Surely Rain is coming in now. They're down. They need to score goals. Your your most aggressive offensive tactician on the field is coming off. You replace him with your other next best tactician. Nope. Although, I'm not saying Dominguez sucks uh, balls no. or anything, but I'm telling you, that's Reyna. That was supposed to be Reyna there. This this is actually this is actually a good argument for it. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of, a couple of them here. So, Nuno is trying to stave off the flow of goals, uh, which is why he put Dominguez on for goal difference because that matters in the table. And that's a very good point. That is a very good point. And I, I mean, guess bring in it, bring in Gio against Tottenham. Do you think uh, but, I think it'd be better to stave off the number of goals being leaked or yeah, that's potentially a, score goals at that point? That's a really negative way to look at it if you're Nuno. Like, that's a super negative way. Like, you don't think that if... – so basically, Nuno said to himself, what's more likely to happen? We're going to give up more goals or we'll score one goal and cut the difference. I guess Nuno said, I'd rather not give up any more goals, so I'm going more defensive. Because a goal difference is going to make a difference, possibly, mm -hmm. at the end of the season. Man, that's a super cynical, conservative so way I as was, a coach to do it. Yeah, I was. Uh, so I was watching uh, Forest Fan TV. Um, he broke down the final six matches for uh, like it was him, it was, it was Forest, Luton, and I think Everton were the three that he broke down for the final uh, six matches. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ways that he, one of the ways that he could, he saw it happening would actually come down to goal differential, and that's yep. so. It makes sense, but it's you know, a good argument. Saving, like, saving, saving goals or uh, scoring more would be the the two uh, counter argument to that, though. I mean, it is Tottenham. But it's tough, yeah. I mean they they've been very good this season. Um, so I can see somebody saying, "Well, let's just not give up any more well, goals." Yeah, um, and I, I didn't I didn't watch the match, so I mean, we're Forrest getting opportunities, just not putting them away. I know, I know, I know, Wood ripped the uh, the post. They so had like opportunities, two, like two for yards score. out. Yeah, no, they had opportunities. That game should not have been three-one. I mean, that miss by um, what's his face you just mentioned—that was wood. Horrendous. Wood. That was he. All he hit was wood there. 
Five, <laughs> five yards out, rip the post. All you have to do is slot it home. Yeah. Five yards. It's just two, three was yards two out. Yards, yeah. yeah. I mean, come on, dude. Just I, was, I, was, I was being a little courteous there. Yeah. Yeah. Have some composure. Just chip it over the keeper. I mean, I don't. He just hammered it as hard as he could. So yeah. uh, there you go. Uh, Chlorella does go on to say, Force was the better team for the first half. Second half, Spurs took over, more or less. Um, and then Wood missed three sitters, apparently. Yeah, he did have a pretty bad game altogether. Um, it's hard to remember it now, uh, watching the game, because while Reyna's not playing, right, yeah. I am watching, but I'm doing some other stuff on my laptop. <laughs> so or, I'm looking up, I'm yeah. looking down, I'm looking up. I'm looking down, you know. Uh, Chandler is better than Reyna, 2023-24 goal season. Yeah, okay. This is why you and uh, Brett hang out and you and I do not. <laughs> Thank you, Scorpion Larry. I appreciate it for $2. Um, uh, Leverdat for $1.99. Thank you, brother. Brett and it was Reyna's and Pepe's agents at Peg, at Peg Con. <laughs> Like I said, uh, like I said on Monday's show, man, it was dark there, so I'm not sure. Just cool a lot of there. a lot of pegging, but not a lot of visuals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on to the midweek report, and then we'll cover our actual topic. Yeah, midweek report's going to be really short because Tuesday yep. Reggie Cannon was in the 18 with QPR, didn't play. As I said before, Reggie Cannon and QPR, those teams are done with each those team and the player are done with each other. Um, Reggie Cannon's going to have to look for a new place to play next season. Dwayne Holmes back in the starting lineup went 90, got an assist and a win. Preston North End now looking better since Dwayne Holmes been inserted back inside the starting lineup. Huh. Curious why he got left off for some of the games he's been left off. Benched, apparently. Uh, my guess would be when you bench Dwayne Holmes, he's kind of like John Brooks. He gets upset. Charles Sargent got another goal. Played 61 minutes, was pulled out because of the hammy thing or the injury thing that we talked about, strain, if you will. Haji Wright went 90 in a loss, missed a PK. He slipped. Yeah. He slipped. If you watch it, he takes it. He's already fallen back on his ass before he even kicks it. Uh, so bad luck for him. He's going to they're gonna have to pick it up, though, man, because they just dropped down below uh, the promotion Norwich. race. Norwich. Yeah. Yeah, they're both behind Norwich. They're five um, points behind them, yeah. Yeah. Ledesma, 90 minutes for PSV U21s in a win. Good to see him get 90. Um, and that was versus West Ham's U21s, by the way. Um, no, it wasn't, was it? Yeah, in the International Cup. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that player, Unikin, who took over Pepe's uh, seat for PSV and the big boy team also got a goal and an assist in that same game for the U21s of PSV. And that was in the Premier League International Cup. I believe that's what that called. And then on Wednesday, Ethan Horvath went 90 and a win. Lyndon Gooch is still injured or injured again. Um, we already talked about, did we talk about Colorado getting trounced by Tigris? Or, uh, no, excuse me, Columbus beating Tigris. Columbus beating Tigris. We should. And no, just give, give them a thumbs up. Yeah, I mentioned how good their manager is, and that's really the difference there. Um, but in the New England game um, versus Club America, uh, Asmir Bakhtarovich got an assist in that loss. Uh, but New England got absolutely destroyed 2-9 to nine on aggregate. Zendayas, though, played 66 and got another goal in that win. And then, of course, Vasquez gets a goal on Wednesday night as well um, for Monterey over Miami. And then on Thursday today, Pulisic went, uh, what I heard was, because I haven't watched it yet, a rather pedestrian 78 in their loss to Roma and Musa Road Pine for 90. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. So now it is time for the part of the show where we talk about grading, rating, Rating players, club experiences this season, overseas and abroad. What does that look like? Um, who had a good one? Who didn't? Who gets an so, A? Who gets a B? Say, so we're officially giving grades now. My big question is what What's your standard for grading? Are we Are, <laughs> are we going Are we going for the public school grading scale in uh, California? That'd be really easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> 
A yeah. across the board, everybody. Yeah, I'll get it. A. 84%? An a? That, that's a C for me. That was a C, my grady. It was a C kid. for me, too. Yeah. Wow. 84% <laughs> in A now? 64% is B. That's a failing grade everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Back when I was a kid, and 44%, you just got the dunce cap. 24 to 44% is a D. That's like the guy that just writes his name on the paper and answers two of the five <laughs> questions and gets one of them wrong. That's unbelievable. Wow. So BMR wants to know 84 is a C? Yeah. Uh, so an A. It was in a, our day and age. An yeah. A for me was uh, 100 through 95. And then 94 through 86 was a B. Then or eighty seven was a B, eighty six to um I don't know I never got a C so I don't know so <laughs> so here's the thing I went to three different high schools all of them had different grading systems but the easiest one I had was Carlisle Pennsylvania Carlisle High School the Thundering Herd um, and um, that was one hundred to ninety. You know, was A or A plus A minus or A plus A A A minus within that hundred to ninety range. Then ninety to eighty was a B. Then uh, C. Obviously, you're following this. Eighty nine uh, to seventy was a C. Sixty nine to fifty was a D. And blah, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea there. So um, yeah, it's just this is a lot easier. I would have liked to have this grading scale. I would have got straight A's, oh. dude. Absolutely straight yeah. A's. And I I, I did get <laughs> mostly A's. I was going to say A's. Everybody's getting A's. This is just papering. The, the even with the harder <laughs> system. But uh, Lover not said this is a, this is any grading system he's ever seen. Uh, this is actually just – this is a recommended grading system for uh, California. Or it says uh, CA parents. I'm assuming that's California. California uh, parents. But, yeah, so it's, it's a recommended grading standard. Oh, so it okay. hasn't been approved yet. Oh, okay. So no, as far as I can tell, I don't know when this actually was out. This hell, this could have been. This could have gone out. Uh, this could have been live in Doctor Phil last Ye year. Maybe it's maybe it's legit now. Who knows? Could be maybe years maybe old for now, but I don't yeah. think any school system's going to adopt this. But no, no, this is not our grading skill. No. <laughs> oh wait, our, Lord. Yeah, think of A as in you know excellent. B is in very good. C is in average. D is in less than average, and F is in failure. And then you got the I for incomplete, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Turner. Let's start with Matt. I'll let you go first on his grade. Um, yeah, Matt Turner's. Uh, he's had a definitely had like a D minus for me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say D. I'd yeah, say D. Yeah, I was gonna give him a D, a D, but. Yeah, it was, no, it's D minus. I'm giving D minus. It's almost an F, but he's had a couple of games in there from time to time. He's had a couple good ones that improved the stinky ones. But again, going back to do no harm, that's your first job as a goalkeeper. Yeah. Unfortunately for Matt Turner, he did a lot of harm this season to Nottingham Forest by making really stupid, unnecessary passes to players who weren't open or players who were being pressured, and it killed him. And then. His shop stopping prowess. Where did that go? Yeah. I, I don't know where that went. That used to be the one thing you could depend on to save shit that other people couldn't save. Yeah. So D, D minus. I'm with you. I'll do Ethan. Ethan Horvath. Um, now. Are you combining his uh, first and second sem uh, uh, halves? I'd say his first semester was, yeah, an incomplete. But yeah, now, sec play. second semester has been a B. I'd say a B minus B. Consistently playing, that's all that matters at the point, doing well yeah. enough. He's only had really one bad game that stood out to me out of all the games he's played so far. And then Drake Calendar, we're not going to do because he's not a Yank abroad. But, hey, you be the judge <laughs> based on last After game. After last time. game. <coughs> oh, boy. He probably just um, played himself right off the U.S. Men's National Team roster that game. He might have. I know it was one mistake. I'm, I'm sure he's had other mistakes in his lifetime. But that, that's a – that was a big whoopsie right there. Especially well, when, when that third spot could be anybody at this point. Yeah, and Stefan's been playing a whole lot better for Colorado after that last game. You got the Columbus. Well, you we have the Columbus kid who's what, like 21 years old? Schulte. Uh, you got Slonina who's playing in Europe. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, Celentano over at um, 
over at uh, Cincy. Cincy. I don't know how well he's doing this season by any means, but. I haven't watched every game. Yeah. Sergio Des gets an A. There's just no way around yeah. it. Yeah. He's been this spectacular. Is, this is the move of the century for him, especially given the last couple of years of his career. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I don't like the fact that in every interview he does, he's like, yeah, I'm ready to move on to a bigger level now. This is really my level. Jesus, dude, don't say that shit. Just be happy you had a good season. There's no need to take a poop on PSV and the Dutch League for crying out loud. Well, I mean, it, not only that, he's playing well. His confidence is at a high level at this point. I understand. I understand the appeal of wanting to play at a higher level. Um, but you know what? what you know what comes with that that higher level is 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 a uh, strife with difficulty, scrutiny. And you you might you might you know start off strong again, but then after a couple of shitty games, all of a sudden you find yourself sitting on the bench, writing pine, getting loaned out to teams that you're writing pine it with again. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think maybe he's not necessarily talking about another bounce up to like a, a Barcelona esque team, but maybe like a mid level Bundesliga or La Liga team or something like that. Maybe or Syria. I hope he but, does. I think Bundesliga would be a perfect fit. If he could go to Frankfurt or Stuttgart, or I mean, he doesn't need to go to Bayern. So I mean, I it'd, be the, it'd be the argument that he would he'd be losing out on the potential of playing in Champions League consistently. Because yep. um, PSV would be a, a, a guarantee, and they'd be guaranteed to contend well enough. Um, I mean, you could say that, but look at Ajax this season. That's Ooh. fair enough. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you go to Stuttgart, you know you're going to get one season of Champions League, right? Yeah. You go to Bayer Leverkusen, you get one season at least. Um, just like if you had gone to Union Berlin last season, you would have got one season of Champions <laughs> uh, League. Hopefully those two teams don't have the quite the, the decline that Union Berlin had this season, though. Yeah, that was a precipitative tis, uh, drop-off. Um, Chris Richards, I'll let you start. Um, I mean, as far as the whole season's concerned, I'd probably give him a, uh, I don't know. He didn't play a whole hell of a lot up until, re until relatively recently. So, no, he's been playing quite a bit for months now. Just that's what I'm saying. Well, no, okay. well, we're almost to the end of the season, though, is my point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, let's, the season's, what, 10 months long, and you've been playing consistently for the last three months. That's still mm -hmm. relatively recently in the recent standard. Yeah, I, I was thinking more four, but that's okay. I don't know. Uh, I can B minus, C plus range. So I'm already written it down. I gave a what the fuck? Why can't you see this? This is just fucked up. Uh, yeah, you can't. It literally, when I put it in front of my face, it disappears. I don't it's, believe you wrote this down either, Derek. It says B minus on it. Why is that not working? Do I have to put my hand? There it is. I got to put my hand around <laughs> it. B minus. All right. Uh, I'll start the next one. Anthony Robinson, Jedi. I'm going to write it down. Oh, I go first. You don't have to write it down. You're going first. I know. But anyhow, I did. How could it not be an A? It is. It's an A. <laughs> How could it not? I mean, yep. I, I guess in that, that argument, what would, what would it require for him to get an A plus? Um, not I mean, have... he's, got, he's got more assists this season than he's ever gotten. The three last games dropped him from an A plus to an A for me. Mm -hmm. He's had... Yes, well, three of the four last games were not up to his standard. So I'm being a little hard on him, but it's still an A, and that's all that counts, an A. Uh, I'll let you do Tim Ring. Um, it's just tough. Yeah. Because <laughs> when he's played, the last game he started, he was the man of the match, and then he's not playing. Well, he, I mean, if I recall correctly, towards the beginning of the season, he had a couple of stinkers. He did. Especially. Yep. And he's, he's, uh, he now, and then he got himself off the, the Ross. Did he, did he, did he play himself off of the uh, starting lineup or did he get injured and then somebody else came in and played better, wasn't it? Bingo. Yes. So the Tosin and Bassey CB lineup was so good for a while. It's like once Reem was back from the injury, it's like, nah, I can't really. I can't put you on, buddy. Sorry. But now the last 
three of the four last games, that Tosin and Bassey um, set up not looking as good all of a sudden. Right, I'm going to give my grade skill and I'm going to ask a question after this. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm going to go B minus. That's fair. That's fair. I went uh, – somebody's making a racket up there. I went with C plus. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, my, my question here is on situations like that where a player was a starter, gets injured, and then a player comes in for him – and starts balling and Reem doesn't get his starting spot back. Is that really a downgrade on Reem on his, on his uh, well, season performance? No, because the one game that Reem did start since that, he was marvelous. I mean, he cleared everything off the line. He was a, it's a great game. This is probably a month ago. And um, I thought he might've just won his spot back, but no. Hmm. So, I, it's the, that one's a really hard because it's out of his hands in many ways because the uh, Bassitosin thing was so good. So we'll see what happens there. Um, since it's not going as good now, at least hmm. three out of the last four games. Uh, Mark McKenzie, kind of a hard one to grade too, but I'll go first and give him a B minus um, or a B. I'll just give him a straight up D. He's been okay for Gank. Gank's problems aren't really the back line. And their problems yeah. are their – they just keep losing players. Like every window, people are scooping up all their players. They just lost paint cell to Galaxy, one of their best players. So their problems really been being as potent going forward as they were in that season before when Gank were at the top of the table. Now, they're not that team anymore. They're not a dominant team in Belgium. That's not all on him, but he has had some games where he thought, Meh, that was not a good game. Um, yeah, so. I, I, I clearly haven't watched many of uh, Mark's games this year, so I, I I wouldn't even feel just giving him a great outside of outside of listening to your Yanks abroad report. Yeah. So I, I don't even, I don't even want to give him a grade, quite frankly, because I it would just be me going, well, Derek gave him a B, yeah, well, there's a whole season. There's been maybe nine games available in total on ESPN Plus so, that yeah. you could have watched with Gank. So you would have to watch all nine of those, which I have. And I would say half of those games, he was pretty good. The other four, not that bad, but not spectacular. And, you know, it does remind me that he's not as big and physical of a mammal as like say CCV who's shorter than him, but just as a bigger physical presence in the box than he is. So a B B minus is what I give him. Mm -hmm. um, not like the season before, although he does start almost every single freaking game, which the season before it was sort of a rotational thing. So um, then we got Joe Scally. That's on you. Um, so, I mean, if I recall correctly from the first, half the season i mean he was a consistent player up until recently i mean consistently starting we put that uh again mm -hmm. recent again talking about 10 month season here well, nine months right now currently i guess but um he played himself he's he's had some poor games recently played himself off of the uh, lineup he was played out of position for a chunk of that too as a right center back, center back. yeah um but he said he had some good games in there he had a, a pretty damn good goal if i recall correctly yeah, but that is yeah. one is one is one. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. want to sway um, you, but mm. nope, no, don't sway me anywhere. I'm saying, I'm saying C minus. Yeah, I said C. I don't know the whole the whole playing himself. I was I was really tempted to give. <laughs> I, may, I may be the jaded one here because I was tempted to give him a D plus because he played himself off of the the. He has. Lineup. So I was tempted to give him a D plus for that by, uh, recency bias and everything, but. I think that the coach is still trying to figure out how to score goals. And um, mm -hmm. that's why when it hasn't been working with him as a right back, certainly wasn't working with him as a right center back, wasn't working with PFOC as starting center forward um, recently. So, yeah, we might see Scally have to battle for some starting spots. And if that's the case, my C is going to drop to a D, just like yours, you were thinking. Uh, yeah. He's been – he's not progressed as a player. Um, he's the same old Scally from last season. It's just really no different. 
He's not, doesn't seem any wiser. Um, although, yeah, he's been put in more tricky situations where he's played out of position. I guess you could say that mm -hmm. right center back is technically not something he should be doing. But when your team's trying to figure out a way to win games, they're probably going to try some different shit. And you got to be able to adapt. And I'm not sure he's done a spectacular job of adapting and like really standing out. Like he doesn't stand out. He's just kind of on the pitch. And you kind of live with that um, when you watch the well, Gladbach yeah. games. You're like, well, I'm watching this Gladbach game, but I'm not expecting dick squat from Scally. Well, general, generally, yeah, there you go. You, you beat me too. I was going to say, generally speaking, you can rely on him being relatively solid enough on the defensive side of the games. Of course, there have been some examples otherwise. But, yeah, he doesn't really get into the attack that often. And when he does, it's usually just to maintain possession around. He doesn't take on He doesn't take on his man at all. Right. Which is fine. He's he's a different type of uh, back than than the today's game is the problem. That's the problem. Right. Christopher Lunn is on me. I will start with it just saying like I've watched three games of his this season. That's not a lot. But, They're not on ESPN plus yeah. that often. So it's just a here and there kind of thing. And that's over like the last seven, eight months. There's think he's been on TV three times. So there's not much to watch. And uh, from what I have watched, it looked like sort of a B. I don't know. Uh, but I, mean, I feel like, and I'm, I'm going, like, you brought this up already, the lack of being able to watch him, but I'm going solely off of what I recall from the Yanks Abroad report. But I just recall, like, there were so many of his games where he was yanked off at halftime or he's not, he, it wasn't a starter and got bit minutes here. That was the beginning of the season. Yep. You're right. Just, I mean, I mean, is a, is a, does a B seem generous there? I feel like. B minus, maybe. I don't know. Again, I haven't watched his games. So I can't. I can only go off of the. Uh, yeah, the three, the three games in the yeah. Yanks report, and it's hard to say. But I will say that he's moved into uh, a more regular role now. He's not getting yanked, yanked out at halftime anymore, or the 65th minute. He seems to be playing longer minutes and contributing. So I'll just give him a B minus. And as you say, it's really hard to watch those games. It's hard to. I don't know. I'd have to buy some illegal feed. Mm -hmm. To watch all of those games, but I'm, so far I've only watched three in yeah. a, in eight months. That's not a lot for me to go off of. And as you said, oh. I just go off of the stats. I go to the stats. I see how long he played, his possession, yep, lost you're possession. Right. You're right. He's been uh, since about no in uh, November. He's been a pretty much consistent starter. Right. So here so at yeah. the end, of the, yeah, he's yeah. had a better. He's had a better season, and I. I saw um, – th th this is the other thing, guys. Um, we're, we're basing it – he's playing in a weaker league yes. than, say, Scally. I'll use Scally or Jedi for that point. Right. Um, but, you know, the grades aren't necessarily in correlation to the league that they're playing in, but it is, 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 it's connected to how they're performing in said league. Right. We'll just so, say that, you know, for instance, Dest is playing at a high school level and Lund is playing at a middle school level, but we can't punish him for playing at the middle school level. He's still going to get a grade, yeah. Right. So, um, although that's not a that's not a completely direct comparison, but I mean, listen, PSV would destroy Palermo, absolutely destroy him. Sure. So, uh, you're Tyler Adams. Incomplete. Yep, that's an I. <laughs> Incomplete. He's had one game. It was a good game, but he's had one game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to say now if that one game is how he's going to play for the rest of the season once he gets over the back spasms that are apparently happening in relation to uh, the healing of his prior injury. Like th there's compensation going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I listened to some doctor talk about this, these sort of back spasms after that particular injury. They're very common. And it is because when you do come back, you're still not using the full, whatever, of the where the body was injured, you're still not used to using all of that yet. You're kind of not cautious about it, but you've taught your body to go easy, right? There. And so you're compensated in other places. Usually the 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 spinal column and the back takes the brunt of that comp compensation um, and you get yeah. back spasms. So. I, I, I know that for a certain because the when my foot when I my foot gets jacked up and everything, I <coughs> overcompensate on the outside of my foot. So when like um, 
actually, it, it, I don't have turf until I actually have gout. Ooh. Um, so that's fun to deal with, but uh, yeah. Um, but when that when that finally um goes away for that time period, um, the rest of my foot ends up hurting because I have been favoring like the outside of my foot walking with it. Yeah. Same same concept in that sense. You, you overcompensate on one other aspect so you can get around, you know, through life. And then when that goes away, you're just like you're, the rest of your body's going, "What the fuck was that?" Yeah, the disease of the royals. Yeah. Um, all right, so eat, we eat too much red meat and drink too much booze. <laughs> I'll move on to Musa. I'm just gonna give Musa a C. Um, I think he's done all right. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't regressed, but he's not advanced. So well, he's we've, just yeah. stuck where he was with Valencia in the same sense that he's still good carrying the ball forward. The blue goal ball sticks to his feet like glue. But when it comes to creating something in the final third or lifting his head up and finding the right pass through pass, although he did get, he had one a couple games ago that was amazing that he should have had assist for. Um, it's not, it's not different. It's the same. He's not progressing like we all would hope he would progress, but it's not been horrible. Well, I feel like maybe if he, you know, once he's settled down with Milan as far as like a season or two in there, I think maybe we'll start seeing some more growth. But he's basically the same we saw at Valencia, but he's on a better side, mm-hmm. and he's he's fighting for playing time now. Yeah, when he comes in, he plays well enough, and as we we talk about his as uh, his, um, his problems on the field, and that's like you said, it's his final third. Right. Everywhere else, he's perfectly fine. So right. yeah, I mean the C C that C range C plus whatever. I mean he's doing it at uh, I don't know that range. He's he's about, it was an average season for him, I guess you could say. Yeah, C C plus whatever you want to put there. The point is he's a long term investment for AC Milan. Um, they didn't buy him because they thought he would you know immediately come in and be a starter. I mean, how could you? He's a teenager, but at the same time, I think that they're playing him enough. 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here, starting on occasion, rare, but starting, you know, enough to say we we trust this kid and we believe in him and he's a long-term investment for this team. But boy, boy, oh, mother mm-hmm. and boy, does that kid need to work on composure in the final third. And this is sometimes something you can't ever get. This is my only concern, Brett. Creativity is almost a God-given talent or some sort of transcendental given talent. I don't want to say God, because some people don't believe in God, and then we have this whole discussion about God and blah, 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 blah. Okay, but it is something that you sometimes innately have, or you don't. It's really hard to teach creativity, and it is something that lacks in his game. Now, could he get more wise? Could he to his soccer IQ increase? So he could get better at finding those moments. Yes. Mm-hmm. But is he ever going to be Gio Reyna? No. Yeah. It's not. Uh, whose turn is it? It's me. Okay. Wes. No. Giovanni Reyna. <coughs> oh, Reyna. Mm. Incomplete. Mm. I'm sorry. You're, your giving it, you're giving him an incomplete? I am right now. Um, it's either know. that or a D. It's a D or an F. Or it's incomplete. Like didn't get the chances. I would, I would, I would, I would say it's a C minus. Quite frankly, because uh, here's here's the thing. Here's the argument. Okay. All right. He was he he was playing using last season as a comparison. He came on as a super sub. Mind you, he produced. He had a great he had a great second half of that season because the first half of the season he was still recovering World Cup, etc. Doesn't count. First, the first half he was recovering. No, last season doesn't count. We're only judging this season. No, 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 no. I'm using it as a key example of saying that he still got the bit, he still got the super sub minutes, but he's not producing. So he, I would say he's regressed as far as those compare that comparison. Hmm. Now, mind yeah. you, he goes on, he goes on, he's he's fine on the pitch. I think he's good. Uh he needs he needs more chances, quite frankly, to produce. Right. Yeah. I think, I think last season was kind of uh um lightning in a bottle for him. You know, coming back after not having played for almost two years. Yeah, yeah. So, I I think yeah, that's why I almost want to give an incomplete because I don't feel like. And then you could just give him a shitty grade for not making an impact when he has gotten those minutes. Um, 
So it's hard to say. So for me, it's either a D or it's an incomplete. And you yeah, could bring. I'm sticking with C minus. He's got. He's got to take advantage of those minutes he gets. I mean, it's not like he's giving away the ball and playing like an idiot. Um, it's just that he's been put in a situation right now where it's hard to make a immediate impact playing eight, ten minutes a game, an occasional twenty minute game, um, in the Premier League. So yeah. All right, now it's Wes. All right, now me. Uh, I'm giving Wes an A. I think he's had an A season. Now, last couple games, uh, not no as mic- good No as... micromanage. I mean, that's, I know, I know. Between saying giving like an A and A minus, sure, but that's kind of splitting hairs. You can say an A minus, that's fine. L- last game wasn't bad because um, he should have had that assist, but it was called off sides. Um, but he, the game... did just, he did just get an assist. Game before was like, ugh. um, yeah, I'd still give him an A. I think he's yeah. been fabulous, absolutely great. I still hate watching Juventus games. <laughs> it's a, it's agony every time I have to turn on the the TV and watch the replay before doing the show because I know I'm going to be bored as motherfucker for most of the game. Um, but I'm there to watch Wes and Way when he gets a chance, which isn't that often. But, uh, I mean, 20 minutes a game, 10 minutes here and there. But Wes has just been probably the most consistent contributor and player on that team all season, and I got to mm-hmm. give him an A. Hey. Yeah. I uh, know right. I agree 100%. I'm not okay. Gonna, what, are, right. what else are you going to say? No. Right, exactly. Christian's yours. I'm giving him an A. Any commentary around that? <clears throat> uh, he's had a stellar season so far, um, but there have been games where he's ghosted. And that's not necessarily – that's a tough part because it's not necessarily on him. There are some games where they just continually go down that left hand side. For and good, what for good you, reason. Yeah. What, yeah. Well, no, 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 I'm not trying to take anything from on that front either. But uh, you 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 take him out of the equation. There are some games where he's ghosted. I don't know. It, it, it's it's tough. I'm gonna say I'm sticking with my A though. I'm gonna give him an A too, and I totally agree with your assessment. It's tough watching AC Milan. Uh, sometimes too, not for the same reasons watching Juventus. But the most difficult thing is, I mean, obviously I'm watching Pulisic on the screen wherever he moves, whatever open space he moves into, some of his runs that people don't see. Um, mm-hmm. And then, as you said, they play down, for obvious reasons, they play down Teo Hernandez and Leao's side. Why? Because Teo Hernandez is a baller. He's a straight-up assassin. And so was Leal. And so it I don't hold that against AC Milan. But when I'm watching the game, and I'm not really an AC Milan fan, you know, I want to see Pulisic get some touches. But when 70%, 60% of the plays on the other side of the field on the attack, yeah, it gets a little frustrating to watch. I can't put it on him. I don't think he's ghosting on purpose because I watch him run into open space. Mm-hmm. And I watch him throw his hands up a lot during a game going, hey, I was right here. Um, And that's good that he's demanding the ball. Um, But he's been pretty damn good when he does get the ball. And if, for God's sakes, Leal goes down um, and they got to throw Pulisic out on the left, which is what they've done before when Leal's been injured and play Chuck Wazy on the right, then we see a lot more Pulisic, which is what I like. Um. But I don't want to wish injuries on Leo. I think he's a great player. And yes, yeah, so A. So, how can you give him any more than a less than it? There you go. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring up yeah, I'm gonna bring up a couple of uh comments here real quick. Uh Pokerman says, How is CP not an A plus? One of the best seasons for America in Europe ever. Before you comment, one of the best seasons in Europe ever for a US player is just an A is hilarious. Um this this We're, is kind of my this is kind of my uh question to Derek whenever we brought up Jedi. Um, and oh, Jedi had an A. I'm like, what does Jedi have to do in order to get an A plus? I mean, Jedi has has had a, a wonderful season in the EPL. Spectacular. He's he's, he's scored. He's gotten more assists than he's ever gotten. Uh, he's like number one in tackles by like a ridiculous amount. Stats wise, he's great. Yeah, I mean, but that's all I'm asking. Like, what is it? What is it required to get an A plus? Because you look at them like, well, that that's a great fucking season. He should have an A plus, but. I mean, they're, they're, by saying A plus, you're basically stating that yeah, there's nothing more you could do. Right. This, you've had the best performance ever. You're in like the 98th percent percentile of what you could accomplish 
That's an A+. 99%, 100%. There is no way this is the best Pulisic yet. We're going to see better from Pulisic. This is an A, bordering on an A+. plus. But, geez, I mean, if you're out there that stickler about it, do you want to add a plus mark to the end of it? Go ahead and add it. But an A is a fabulous grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Brett and I, our standards are pretty fucking high. An A plus would require a, a, a just a balls out killing it season. I'd say Pulisic would have to have four more goals, maybe four more assists, and they would need to play through Pulisic more. And that's not his fault, really, as yeah. we said. But there are games, as Brett called it, ghosting. I mean, that's one way to put it. The other way to put it is that they just don't see him. And they don't pass. Well, I also, the ball. I also specified that that some of that ghosting might have just been from playing strictly down the left because we've talked about that many games. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't find him because they're kind of single minded, and he does get into the open space a lot, and they don't find him. But is this a perfect season? You need to have the league a perfect season for me to say a plus. Is it a damn good season? It sure as fuck is. It's a damn good season. All right. Um, Johnny Cardoso. This one's tough because he got there, right? Start, start, start. And now, bitch, what the hell is going on there at Real Batiste? It's not injury because he's been on the bitch. I'm still going to give him a B plus because I think he went in there and it. Oh, it's your your turn. My bad. Well, no, you. I did it plus six. So, yeah, you're fine. Going first. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, B, B plus because he went in there and adapted straight off and looked really comfortable. Scored a Galazzo, had some great games, had some other games. Just, they were fine, but mostly the fact that he was able to get there and adapt this fast and become a starter. Not now, but um, so, you know, um, Jack. I, I'm assuming you're talking about Johnny as well when you say this, but uh, because you specified the entire season, um, do we consider his time? in brazil for the first half of quote unquote the season if you will yeah that was probably an a there at international i was gonna say because uh because i i can flat out say it, i didn't watch any of the games i can only go off of what tact was talking about because he watched them stats stats statistics um i mean just now well i mean he was starting he was starting for what arguably the best team in brazil one of the best yeah so i mean you know, that can't, can't just you know throw that aside by any means um so what, what do you say you gave me a b a b, plus? a b plus and that's because you know i would have given him an, 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 an a, just stuck with the a but now with this sudden twist where he's a bench guy doesn't make any sense to me but how many how many games so far has he been benched two he came off the bench in one i believe and the other one he didn't play at all and i'm just like what's going on here I asked Tact about it. He's not 100% sure yet either. So we'll find out. But that was a real, like, what happened there? And let's just be really honest. There were a couple games with Batiste where uh, he looked a little lost. All right. Not totally lost, but he didn't have his best game and his best stuff. So he's virgin on an A minus. I'm going to stick with the B plus. And uh, let's see if he. A fair breakdown. Fit- if he finishes out the rest of the season as the starter again, then and they keep winning and he keeps performing, then he'll be back to an A. Uh, but we only got like six or so, a handful of games left. So a B plus is a good very, grade. It's a good grade, people. Yeah, very promising. Yeah. Man, people are really sticklers. My oh man, that's a fucking B minus, man. No, that's a B plus, dude. I mean, come on. Let's not be too well, sticklers. There, there's a gap that. between a B plus and a B minus. But. I mean, the the gap between an A minus and a B plus is quite small, right? Well, technically speaking, you could have I mean, in our in our grading scale, you could have had a ninety four, that would have been a B plus, and then the ninety five would have been an A minus. But that sounds A minus sounds better, right? Yeah, I mean it does sound better, but, it is let, better, but... <laughs> if I had to say what kind of number Cardoso's B plus is, it is a ninety four. It is verging on an A. It's just mm-hmm. lately, I'm not sure what's going on. And when we find out what's going on, we'll, I guess we'll have a better uh, idea. But, uh, yeah, I mean, play at International was quite good. If that would have continued in a consistent basis with so, the Chiefs, you know, we'll see. Uh, Cardos, uh, BMR says Cardoso was only benched for one game. They didn't have a games this weekend, apparently. And Cardoso and Luka Del Torre play tomorrow. 
Right. No, 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 no. He's right. He's only been benched and rode pine 90 full minutes for one game. That is true. But why? That was my question. Gone from a starter to being benched for 90 minutes? I, I don't even understand. And I guess it's because one guy came back from injury. They shifted around some stuff. But benching him for 90 minutes after the way he's played seems a little harsh. But what do I know? I'm not the coach. Don't know. And what we'll find out. I mean, Tack's looking into it to find out why that happened. And we'll see. Is he going to get benched again for the next game? Now I'm going to start getting concerned. So, yeah. So uh, it looks like uh, uh, the uh, March 10th game, he came off the bench for 12 minutes. Correct. Then it looks like he may have started the next match, played 54 minutes. Yep. And then he didn't play at all in the last Correct. Match. So the last three games in total are like, what's going on all of a sudden? You know, that's what you have to ask. Uh, because he was going almost full games before that. Full games. And playing pretty well, too. So, hmm. you know, it's we're talking about fine details at this point. But we will find out tomorrow, you know, if this is continuing with Cardoso. I hope not because when he was a starter, he looked great. Well, mostly great. Did have a couple rough games. Um, all right. Uh, whose turn is it? Uh, it's mine for Ricardo Pepe. Pepe. Uh, <coughs> started off strong, but it's fizzled out as far as production level and minutes too. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the most recent debacle. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say B minus. I think that's fair. I was going to say B. Minute, min, the minutes is what's getting me, though. Yeah. And again, not necessarily his fault by any means. I mean, he was producing it with low minutes, and it's and obviously uh, De Jong is performing. I mean, it's yeah. Minutes, you're not going to kick De Jong off the lineup. Now, there was that one game that Bosch, <laughs> um, he experimented and started Pepe as a left winger instead of um, Chucky. And that was okay. It wasn't great. I'd like to see more of that. That way you got Pepe and um, De Jong on the pitch at the same time. And it's not like Chucky's, you know, he's not out there destroying things. <laughs> and Lang's injured. So how about try that one more time and let's see if Pepe can get used to it. But when your agent comes out and say what the agent says and Bosch is the kind of manager he's, I heard it was an injury a knock or whatever, but sometimes in the soccer world, you're kind of like, yeah, a little cynical. Well, maybe, uh, sure. It was an injury. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe guys, maybe Derek and I may, maybe, maybe we have a bias towards Pepe. I don't know. Cause everybody, everybody was cons uh, consistent with the C you had a, uh, uh, that's a lot of goals to score. Al, in a Weinstein, Al Weinstein, uh, Pepe's number one fan or number, uh, number one fan of Pepe. Gave him a C minus until he opened his mouth, and now he's a D minus. <laughs> That's fair. Listen, you can do that, and I would understand. And I do understand what Brett said too that the production's gone down lately. Um, I guess I could punish him more for that, and punish him and his agent for that. But for as many goals as he scored in the limited time that he's had, and the goal in the Champions League. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to go harsher than a B minus. It really is. He could not be playing at all. So, uh, yeah. I mean, there's that. It's not the dream season Pepe wants. But you know what? This is on his agent. Why did you send him to PSV? There are plenty other. Well, I can tell you why. Because PSV was the only one willing to fork up the money yeah. to Augsburg to get him. Nobody else well, was willing to pay his salary because otherwise he would have been loaned out again, right? To yeah. you track or somebody, you know. Well, and from I mean, Ernie's come out and he's he stated uh, the reasons why he really wanted Pepe. Uh, he likes what he's able to do. He he finds him very promise. He's a very promising talent. And it wasn't for the short term uh, game, like it was. It was uh, we're bringing, we're going to get you, we're signing you on, but they're looking more long term. Right. So, and again, he's not going to beat out De Jong at this point. I would like to see him get more minutes. We've talked about this ad nauseum throughout the season, but it is what it is. So I want to bring this up, Al. Damn, Derek, Pepe did an interview too. It's not like the agent isn't consulting with his client. I agree, but it is the agent's job. 
to talk with this client and say, I'll do the talking. And I agree that Pepe shouldn't have said a goddamn thing. But what Pepe said, I mean, it wasn't that egregious. But then when it comes on top of layered with the what the agent says, now it's becoming egregious. Now it's becoming something a guy like Bosch is not putting up with. So let's hope that's not what happened. Let's hope that Pepe really was injured, although I never hope anybody's injured. Because if it is an injury and he just got totally left off the 18 because of his big mouth and no, his agent's think, big mouth, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. I 100% think – anytime something like that happens, I always immediately go to uh, um, Ted Lasso in the first season when uh, he's taking uh, taking Roy off the starting lineup. Of course you do. <laughs> he, go, he, goes, he goes, hey, I can always just tell him that you're injured. That happens. Yeah. You know, and he's like, yeah, that would save – you know, you know that would – keep my stock high enough unless I have to go play for America, you know, type thing. But yeah, I mean, no. And then uh, Burhalter did the same thing with, uh, with geo against wheels. Ah, you know, he, uh, he had a knock. He was, in, he was injured. Which then Reina said, you're, I'm you not know, injured. I'm not injured, I'm which not was, injured. whoa, contradicting the coach when he's trying to protect you. Not a good story. Uh, not a good look usually for the coach or you. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. But yeah, well, so the, whenever it comes up, like oh, there's a controversy and all of a sudden somebody's injured, I don't believe it for a second. I don't either. I don't either. I'm sorry I'm that cynical. Whose turn is it? Uh, it's yours. Brennan Aronson, C plus. And I only added that plus on, by the way, because of the last three games that he's played. Mm. Like before that, I was thinking C minus. And then the last thing C minus. Are you even even with even with this performance? Because his his he has barely gotten playing time this season at all. Up and until he, the last three until games, recently, yes. Yep. So I'm saying I'm saying C minus. Okay, and I'm only saying C minus because of the last three games. Quite frankly, yeah, I was a stinker before that. You might be more right than me. I may be being ho more hopeful um, for him because you're, the last... you're you're going. Please God, please God, let's have dark Brandon. Well, we got Dark Brandon for three games in a row for Union yeah. Berlin. So I'm hoping. Uh, and then based on the after game interview, he seemed really honest about that. Um, you know, about like just not being able to find his place on the team. It was really frustrating for him. <laughs> so yeah. I guess C, C minus, maybe C plus is really generous. Um, and I get it. Maybe I'm just being too nice. So you're probably more. If you if you averaged out our two scores, it's a C, which is average, and maybe that is not fair too. If you take the whole freaking season into its whole totality, I would be more apt to agree with you, Brett. Yes, yeah. it's just he had a horrible season up until recently. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, at, le at least at Leeds, it wasn't a great season for him, but at least he played <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, yeah. But now he, he comes to Union Berlin. He played for a little bit at the beginning. Didn't play for a huge stretch and then just came back and he's firing on all cylinders. And I'm hoping that he keeps it up because Union's not going to keep him. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Leeds don't want to keep him. So he needs to do something these last handful of games to really try to uh, build up any potential stock. This is Larry. This is why Larry drives me nuts. Like I would, I don't care. If you think I jerk off to Brendan Harrison, dude, I really don't. But I mean, I don't because I don't swing that way. But I got to say, yeah, I've watched the last three games and I've been happy for him. Happy for him. So that definitely skewed my grade there. There's no doubt it skewed my grade. All right. Um, and it probably shouldn't, but it did. Sorry. But as I said, Brett's probably right on this grade. I'm wrong. All right. Is it my turn yet? Or uh, you turn? did Brendan. You did Brendan. Okay. You do Haji. A Haji, I'm giving a B plus. Hard for me to give him a B plus. I'm giving him an A minus. That's fair. Uh, that penalty kick he missed, which is like the worst thing that's happened to him all season, except for there have been occasions earlier in the season where he missed some sitters. There's no doubt about that. <sighs> But I mean, I can't, second guess myself now. He's scoring goals in bunches, you know. Yeah, so I, I can't 
fault him for he's the do, He's doing it at two different positions, too. Yes. Got to give right. him an in I'll, the... I'll go with the A minus. I'll go with the A minus. Yeah, I'd say somewhere in the A territory, for sure. Um, might be just actually making a compelling argument that he might be, along with Sargent, the two hottest strikers we got right now. So... Yeah. Well, no, mm. clear, no, clearly, because we, yes. we just we just talked about our other one. Um, yes, yeah, and, right, right. And then and then we're going to be talking about our other one here yeah. shortly. I love how, like, even amongst the people that watch the show, how divisive this whole thing is. It's like B minus what for sure a B. <laughs> More goals than Sarge, lol. More games than Sarge, also. Uh, come on, context, Larry. Context, context. Hey. He, I think he folds it up. He folds it up. I think it was. Just, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Two more games, yeah. You better, Larry. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Um, let's see. Malik Tillman. My turn. Yeah. You can tell I've been drinking too much. I can't keep track of whose turn it is. <laughs> uh, Malik Tillman. Um, I got to give him an A minus as well. Like, he's had some spectacular games. He has won a starting spot on that team. But then he said some games were eh, so so. Um, but mostly pretty damn good, pretty impressive. He's obviously impressed Bosch, but I think he could have been better. So it's a B plus A minus for me, somewhere around the area. I'm like in the 94, range of a, yeah, 94. I'm, in the, uh, I'm more of in the range of the uh, the B plus A or wait, no, the BB plus, the B plus. That's what I'm saying I'm in that range between those two right there. The oh, team. okay. Very good then. Yeah, he's had a good he's had a good season. Yeah. I think I think it's I think it's better than his time with Rangers. Um better there's still games. There's yeah, better competition. There I think there's still games, bigger games that he uh he didn't show up for. But then other games where he balled. So yeah. I mean, the game against Dortmund where you're really thinking, okay, he's going to get tested here, want to see what he can do, and the best thing he could do is draw a foul. I mm -hmm. mean, he did not have a great game there, um, which makes sense. They're playing against a really good team. But generally, listen, he's trending in the right direction. You want to give him credit for that. Mm -hmm. Clearly not up to the overall creativity standards of a Gio Reyna yet. Um, we were hoping it would be closer than it is in the – the gap between those two, but the gap's still there. Um, and that shows in the uh, U.S. men's national team games. It does. It shows. Uh, Florin Balagun. That's you, right? Again, this is me basically. I can't watch any of his games because I don't get the. Uh, I know. BN? Is it BN that has them or whatever? BN, you know? yep. I can't watch any of his games, so I can only go off of the stuff I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I know that he's not. He, Yes, he's scoring some goals here and there, but he's not having a great season. He's missed a ton of PKs, and he's got removed from the PK taker list. Yep. Uh, doesn't start all the time. Not a not lot, any, actually. Not anymore. Nope. Um. So I got, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give him a C. Yeah, C C minus. There was no real advancement from his last season in Lille. This is not an improvement from last season. No. Let's also keep in mind Monaco play a lot more like the U.S. men's national team than Lille, and that means that he has to play with his back to goal sometimes. They might want to get him out wide more and get more open space. That might help him. Um, but, yeah, it's not all his fault, obviously, but um, not a great season, just – this is based on the stats uh, that I've read and following all of those from game to game and his minutes, uh, the reports from his just, coach, his coach, yeah. and his manager, and what they're saying. And then the missed PKs are just totally unacceptable. You can't miss four PKs in a season. So C, C, average. At best, average. This is it, if he was playing his average best, he should be. I guess he's doing good enough to continue to score goals. Um, so I guess he's fine. I would have, I was hoping for like an A season from him, honestly. But if he's being asked to play in a system where there aren't many through balls, because that's his skill. He plays off the back of a CB. You play a through ball. He outruns the CB. He gets the ball. He scores. 
Not a whole lot of that going on based on all the highlights I've watched, based on all the um, footage that I have seen as like you. I don't have BN, can't watch the full games, can only watch chunks of games that are published on YouTube. So, yeah, maybe our grade isn't fair. If you disagree with us, it might be because you get BN and you're watching all the games and you think he's doing, you know, firecrackers are shooting out of his ass and we're just missing that. Um, but yeah, that's where we stand. Mm. Mm. All right, Timothy Wea. Um, you. Yeah, C, uh, C, C minus, C. Just not having any impact out there at all with all the minute. You could say he's not playing a lot, but he does get good chunks of time to play sometimes. But he's playing right wing back. I don't think he's totally comfortable with that. And then we see him roam all over the place like a like a, a rudderless ship out there. Mm -hmm. Cutting in. He doesn't, I don't know. You're, you're really yeah. building up to my grade because I said it was going to be a D plus. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a little more, I'm a little more jaded here because uh, well, I mean, I watch all the games anyways. Right. But, uh, I'm a little more jaded because you see what he does with the U.S. but it's actually Norley's has done. Uh, he's playing a, he's playing a position for Juve that should, in theory, and I don't know what I don't know what uh, Allegri's going <coughs> to do at all, um, but he's playing in a role that should allow him to just bolt down that pitch and lace it across or try to beat a man and shoot the ball from out. Um. But, but instead, is, but Kenny does that. Yeah, but he's he's all over the place. Yeah, there are games where he'll he's out he's out right, and then all of a sudden you see him out left wing, and all of a sudden he's in the middle. He's that striker, and you're just like, what is happening here? What am I watching? Yeah. And that's the thing. I don't know how much of it is Allegri and how much of it is Wea. I can't imagine it's Wea because he doesn't do that with the national team. And now mind you, that might be more Burhalter. He like has a more team. fixed role with us for yeah. sure. So maybe that's maybe Allegri gives him a little more freedom to go into the pockets because you do see uh, uh, McKinney and um, uh, Cambiasso. Cambiasso. I'm we always going to butcher his name. We do this. Always every going show. to butcher his name. Uh, but they they do it. They do they do go back and forth. Right. And uh, it, they, yeah, right. The wing back does the right wing back position does kind of float. So it might be more Allegri, but it is. He's had a a nothing burger of a season, quite frankly. Yeah, it's been unfortunate. Um, this might be I, I, you, we might see Wea go on loan next season to a more middle table well, team where he gets to play his position. He gets to play as a forward, a right winger, not as a right wing back who occasionally roams all over the field and whatever. I don't know why because he never touches it. Nobody mm -hmm. ever passes him the fucking ball. And yes, that could be Allegri. That's not all. All on Timothy Wea. But listen, you get to a team, you need to make an impact, and you're making no impact yep. whatsoever outside of one game, which was a cup game, I believe, where he had yeah. that uh, Galazzo. Yeah. And that was that was it, folks. It's just been a big nothing burger. Because when he does play on the right wing back with McKenney as the center midfielder next to him, they end up flip-flopping positions because Wea runs up the field and becomes a forward uh, who runs in open space and nobody ever passes it to him. And then you are relegating McKenney as a two cover him right back spot, his asshole, as he goes roaming around like an aimless uh, fawn. So I don't know what's going on there. That could be like we're blaming the student here, as Brett said, but it could be the teacher. And that's Allegri. Allegri's just a poor teacher. He is a poor, I mean, nobody loves <laughs> watching. Yeah, Juventus is just atrocious to watch in general. So, um, Probably not all way as fault, but we got a grade from what we what we so, got. So, so Robert I just mentioned that Juve are selling uh, way of this summer from what he heard. And I don't know if he's heard from the same person I heard it from, and that was on Jimmy's show. Call it what you want. I forgot the guy that they had on the uh, show who covers uh, a lot of the uh, serious uh, stuff. Pepe Le, Pepe Le Pew? Is not Le Pew. No. <laughs> uh, but – uh, but he did mention he he did mention that he heard that that Juve may be uh, breaking away from uh, Wea this summer. Oh, they're going to whether that's a loan yeah. or they're going to try to sell them. It more likely be a loan. More likely, so. and a loan would be better because then he can go and play for another team, mid-table team, 
who will play him in his natural position. He can go then and make a real impact, maybe score some goals, and then come back to Juventus and they go, oh, and Allegri's not there anymore. And the new manager goes, oh, this kid is really good as an open space right winger who has immense speed. And we're going to use that speed to our advantage because right now it's like his big biggest asset mm -hmm. is not an asset on this in this system with Allegri as the manager. And quite frankly, I don't know, with the aimlessness, aimless nature of his positioning as a player when he is out there. So Jack Pineda says McKinney might leave uh, Juve too. Yeah, well, it's very possible. That one's most like, more likely, actually. It's more um, money thing there. Yep. Well, I mean, Juve, Juve, uh, Juve offered uh, a contract. McKinney be, uh, d declined it because of it was actually de it was actually a decrease in pay. So Wesson's like no, and maybe he's holding out for more. Hold, you know, playing hardball with Juve. Um, but yeah, at the, the summer, the summer we're gonna find out if, if Juve don't offer him more, then they're gonna shop him. Now the problem is, will another team be willing to spend? 20, 25 mil for Weston at that point? And who who are, who are the big suitors? Yeah, there's not going to be any huge suitors. Um, I.e., there aren't going to be a whole lot of teams willing, who have money, that are going to be willing. Like, okay, let's talk about the team's money. Teams are Man City, Man United, um, Chelsea. Uh, there aren't all, maybe Newcastle. Newcastle's not a horrible idea. Um, Tottenham, but then again, there was the recency bias. And if you yep. are a Premier League team and you just watch McKenny play at Leeds, you're thinking he can't handle the Premier League. This is one step too much for McKenny, and I that's going to be a bias a lot of those guys are going to have, um, based on what they just saw. And then no other team in Italy is going to pump out the kind of money that McKenny is asking for. Inter Milan's very conservative. And they got what they want for the most part right now. There's not a whole lot of teams in the Bundesliga who can pump out the kind of money that um, McKenney and his agent are looking for either. Like Bayern mm -hmm. is about it. <clears throat> and I don't think Bayern are interested in McKenney. That could change. Tuchel's leaving. I don't know. But I think you're probably more than likely to see him play at like Frankfurt or Stuttgart or Hoffenheim. I don't see him at a big club because I just don't know if any. So he's going to have to take a pay reduction wherever he goes. I think this is going to get worked out in the end. And I think he's going to stay at Juventus, honestly. Yeah. So um, uh, in that same interview, they brought up uh, uh, Diego Mota from uh, Bologna. Yeah. And uh, as, as a possible replacement for Allegri, uh, that. I think he mentioned he mentions that he's he's one of the one of the uh, top candidates, if you will. How about the uh, Atlanta coach? He's good too. Mm. But yeah, um, but it is possible uh, a new coach might might convince McKinney to take the lesser deal. Yeah, he just wants to go someplace where he's wanted. And again, I know Fumar said Aston Villa. I think maybe he mentioned West Ham too. I just don't know because. There is that bias in the EPL. It is Diego, yeah, Diego, yeah. You go right. to the EPL. I too, but... If you go to the EPL and you have a rough season, I mean, look, like Leeds isn't even sure that if they get promoted, they want Brendan back. They're like, well, nah, we don't want Brendan back. So you have a bad season in the Premier League. I don't know. Do you do you still are you still looked upon as a Premier League? A player who can handle the Premier League. I don't know, but typically not. You go there, you bomb out, you leave, and you don't come back. That's happened a lot. Now, have there been players that have come back? Yes, but it's it's not the norm. You bomb out in the Premier League, whether you believe he bombed out or not. And I don't think it was all Wes's fault. And it surely wasn't Brendan's fault either. Why they bombed. Why Leeds sucked. But people are going to... Hang, hang that around your neck like an albatross. Hmm. And when you get signed by Aston Villa, all the Aston Villa fans are going to go, what the f is that? 
That dude was horrible at Leeds. They say it now. They say it now. They joke on him now. English fans joke about McKenney as a big, fat, you know, horrible player for Leeds. So you're going to have to sign him knowing that the initial reaction from your fan base is going to be, what is that? That guy was atrocious at Leeds. And they, they're they wrong to say he was atrocious. Leeds were atrocious. Yeah. But he's going to be labeled with that from here on out. Ooh. Sure. All right. We got to fly through these. Yeah. I got a couple super chats to do at the end of the show, too. So when we're done. Let's just, let's just hit the, the heavy hitters on the recent call-ups, I guess. Yes, just the heavy hitters um, uh, abroad. What would you do with uh, Slonina? I'd give him a I'd give him a C plus or a B minus because I think it was a learning experience for him, sure. which is a plus. But yeah, Oipen are fucking garbage, dude. They are the worst or near the worst team in that league. And she can blame uh blame all that on the goalkeeper in that sense. I'm not. That's why I'm giving him a C plus <laughs> because it's been a learning experience for him. He's getting pummeled every yeah. game. So it can't be that bad. Uh uh all right. Yeah. C plus is fine. I mean yeah. that's not to say he had a horrible game, a horrible C or a, a bad season by any means, but even though C plus we talk about it all the time how we came home with a C plus, our parents would be like, what the yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is it was yeah. above average. It was above average. So he's yeah. moving forward. He's learning. He's getting more experience. None of that is bad. But did he, you know, is Oipen and, and, and Selena blowing the doors off anybody? No, but I don't know what else you can expect for him, but to have a season where he's getting scored on left and right and pummeled because that team is awful. It's a bad team. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Cameron Carter Vickers. Wow, injured for a little while now, but still, you know, that's a B-plus season for Cameron Carter-Vickers. I hate to give him an A because the competition sucks, and then when they went to the Champions League, they looked like poo. So, um, B-plus. Got to move. He's got to yeah, move. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. He definitely yeah. has to move. Um, I don't know. They lost – they lost a – and again, I don't know how much of this was necessarily on him by means, but they lost matches that or matches they shouldn't have lost. They just lost to Rangers. Yeah. <coughs> um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go B. Fuck. Yeah, that's fine. I think that Kyman Carter Vickers needs to test himself. He needs to get the fuck out of there because it's so hard to give him a grade. Yeah. It's just difficult. A, he's been injured for a good chunk here recently, and. When he plays, of course, Celtic dominate every single fucking game, so he's hardly challenged. So it's like, oh, you get an auto A, you know, because let's say you 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 go you're in college and you work in a work group and the whole work group gets the same grade. Well, if you want to do that, then he gets an A. Yeah. But as far as challenging himself and then losing against Rangers and a couple other games weren't that great this season against Paltry opponents and then this the champions league looked pretty poor yeah i think b plus is fine um brian reynolds i'm gonna let i'm gonna leave this just to you because i have no clue i didn't yeah, i didn't really I, follow brian's career this season there have been like four games on espn plus you could watch this year not impressed see not impressed didn't uh, blow my balls austin trusty austin trusty um you know what? I'm going to give Austin Trusty a B. He was thrown into a horrible situation where he's become the starter on this team, been thrown in multiple positions, played center back, left center back, left back. Uh, although that left back position, let's be really fair, is not really a traditional left back position, is strictly a defensive left back position. I'm going to give no. him a B minus. B minus. <laughs> You've changed it. I, I was going yeah. to give him B minus too, simply because he walked onto, he, he came to a team. And earned his spot, so that's that's already a plus in my books. Yep. The problem is, is if we're gonna give somebody like uh, Slonina a, a C plus because Oipen sucks donkey balls, what are we gonna do about Sheffield, who give up like four or five? <laughs> <minutes a game? laughs> I I'm know. just saying, it's the same standards. I think B minus is fine. C plus, um, B minus, somewhere around there, maybe. Um, a B, B minus, B, B. It's fair, B. But it's there. There's some yeah. games he worked himself off the raw, off the lineup, but uh, I think as a whole, I think he played pretty damn well this season. BB plus range is my guess. 
Be interesting. Be interesting to see what happens now. New coach, new manager. Yeah. So we'll see soon this weekend how that all works out for him with a new manager. Uh, let's see who else we got in this. Leonard uh, Maloney. Uh, Leonard Maloney is an A, baby. Yeah. I mean, hey. He's not. He's not going to have the stats to back it up by any means. But I mean, no. he was absolutely instrumental for Heidenheim when he was gone injured. They sucked. Right. I mean, they didn't. I don't know if they necessarily sucked, but they, they were lost bad. And drew a bunch right. of fucking games. Yeah. I mean, you had to give it to him. He you a, do a great season. Great season cuts down. I mean, this guy's soccer IQ is through the fucking roof. He is everywhere where the team wants to play. Like he's all over the field. Number one, I think he has the most miles run in the season in the Bundesliga. So yeah. he runs his outs off. He's a hard ass worker. He's a great tackler. Um, his soccer IQ, he just knows where to be, where to be positioned to cut off the lanes, cut off the alley so people can't make the passes they want to. They can't get their offense started. And what he just did to Bayern, loved it, loved it. Just basically no more. I'm. They went up and Bayern could do nothing yeah. more. Jack, I've been pushing this for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, you it's know, possible. Maybe. And it's looking more possible based on our current center back situation, honestly. Yeah. You have a, you'd have a center back who's comfortable with the ball, who doesn't mind moving the ball forward. I mean, it's... And let's be honest, for Heidenheim, quite a bit of the game, he's basically just another extra center back. Well, he says he's an emergency center back for He'd be an emergency center back for us. But then again, he's played center back his entire career up until last season. Correct. So, I don't know. I, I feel like he's... Uh, he, I think he. I think he'd absolutely compete with our center backs for the most part. His soccer IQ is up there because you can't have the, the physical – when I say physical limitations, I'm not talking like he's slow. He's not slow. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not the quickest guy on the pitch, but he just knows where to be. It's like Tim Ream. Tim Ream is generally pretty slow for a center back, but he's always in the right place at the right time. Well, not yeah. always, but you know what I'm saying. And this is the same thing with Leonard Bologna coming up through all the systems he came up through, including Dortmund, learning his trade learning his trade, and that's why Heidenheim are way higher up on the table in the Bundesliga. He can be – you can credit him for that. And the manager, obviously, has been really great and just their basic and best. He's been fabulous for Heidenheim all season. He probably won't be there, unfortunately, for Heidenheim ne next season. There's probably somebody going to come and get Bestie and take him away. But what a king season they have had for a team that was laughed at when they were promoted. Like, oh, there's some – Relegation fodder. <laughs> I mean, for for a uh, for a town that has like fifty thousand people, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean it's, good lord. I love their stadium because I think it holds what twelve thousand. That's Ten? something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so small. Yeah. It's like a cottage stadium. I love it. <clears throat> they, you know, they, they bring the noise. I mean, they make it work. So Leonard Maloney, you can't give him anything but an A for what he's done this season for his mm -hmm. team. Um, Paxton. Yeah, I mean, what he's doing for, for Tess right now, kind of making up for the complete failure yeah. with Frankfurt earlier. So I'll give him a C from a failure, from an F, the first half of the season, where he came on and just stunk up the place for Frankfurt. Just stunk it up bad. But for Vitesse, he's been the best player. So I'll boost it up to a C for Paxton. Yeah. No, I'm good with that. That's exactly what I was going to give him, for the exact same reasons, actually. Yeah, although Vitesse are the worst we're next to the worst team in Holland. So, um, oh, so it holds about 3,000 more than I said, because I said yeah. 10 to 12. So 15, that's a little bigger. That for a town of 50,000, that means like almost half the city has to show up for the game. <laughs> and surrounding burbs of the city. Yeah. Yeah. The burbs too. Uh, I don't know about, I've never been to Hyde and I'm, so I'm not sure. Well, I'm, but, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there are burbs around the city. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, uh, Tanner Tessman. Um, a minus, a minus. Um, carried the team center midfield for quite a bit of the season there at Venezia. Um, had some off games here and there, but for the most part, pretty impressive for Venezia. Yeah, some. I, I was going to give him an A. I'd be fine with an A minus, but I think a. I'm still sticking with my A. Okay, that's he's fine. Had, he, he's instrumental for the team. Yeah, he he's not going. to – I mean. He, Venezia, if they if they get promoted, yeah, he'll be back in Syria. Whether or not he'll still be with Venezia, whether or not they get promoted, will be the other question. Yeah, 
I mean, <clears throat> that's the thing. They've had some games recently that have been like must-win games. And it not just Tessman, but a lot of the team didn't show up. Mm-hmm. Um, and now instead of being really, you know, out there at the top of the table where it's obvious they're going to get auto pro promo promotion, now it's going to look like it's going to be a battle. So, yes, good point. That's what I'm pointing out, Leverett. That's mm-hmm. why I gave him an A minus instead of an A because of the recent drop off when the games are starting to really, 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 really care or, or, or you're, I mean, matter. Yeah, the team itself, the whole team, not just Testman, didn't show up. So, uh, what else we got? Bad. We got Busio, still with Venezia Grew. B, give him a B. He's uh, he's definitely had a better season yeah. than he has had previously. So, BB, uh, BB, minus. BB minus, yeah, it's progression, but it's not like overwhelming because there are yeah. huge chunks of the season he wasn't a starter, mm-hmm. that he came off the bench, he's had some pretty great goals, mm-hmm. some moments. He had, he, had that, he had that famous goal that you couldn't see because of all the fog. There's that, the fog goal. <laughs> I think B minus B is fine. Um, I would like to see better from him. I'd like to see more consistency. I'd like to see more consistent starts. I'd like to see more consistent play. And if I'm really being fair, it's more like a B minus. He's no, He is not the heart and soul of that team like Testament is. Testament is... The center midfielder for that team. He's the heart and soul of the team. He's the quarterback of the team. Mm -hmm. That team goes as Tessman goes. So, Speaking of heart and soul for the team, we got Josh Sargent. Well, you can't say anything but an A. You could give him an A plus if you wanted to. No, because he's injury prone. (laughs) You can't give him an A plus for that. Penalized for being injury prone. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... Uh... I mean, I've got to give him, I gotta give him an A because he's got such a such a, a quality goal scoring um, stat going on right now. I mean, he's just he he can't stop. Mm-hmm. If he had been healthy all season, uh, uh, Norwich probably be getting auto prom, auto promoted at this point, <coughs> or vi- vying for an auto promotion. Let's rephrase that. Based on his stats of goals per minute, had he played the whole season, let's just say play seven, 70 minutes a game, <laughs> he'd probably be around the twenty eight goal area right now probably so 28 29 goals a season i didn't do the math i'm just guessing in my head so yeah i mean you can't give josh anything but an a here a minus if you want to be really grumpy Robert gives him an a minus because he's only had one assist <laughs> That's, if you want to be grumpy you can give him an a minus but you know i don't it, 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 the same it's the same uh i mean i bounced uh haji up for my i gave him a b plus because i was gonna give uh sergeant b plus or a minus b plus range also but but yeah they're both scoring goals buckets of goals so yeah i guess i can't really i mean there are people who want to punish him because he's been injured i don't know if that's that fair i really don't i mean it's not like he injured himself his leg was broken or his ankle got snapped or whatever. By the way, he still finished off the goal with a broken ankle or whatever yeah. the hell it was. So I'm not going to punish him for that. If you guys want to punish him out there for that, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do that. I know availability is half the battle, but uh listen, every game he's been available, he's been except for maybe one or two games all season. Yeah. He's just been a goal scoring machine. And I don't know how you can penalize a guy for breaking his ankle on a goal that he scored. But if you want to, you can. I mean, you guys can do all the ratings that yeah. you want to do. It um, was uh, it was him landing on his ankle. Uh, no, it was his landing. That did it initially? Uh, I can't even remember. No, no, no. It was it was sorry, it was it was it was when he deflect he blocked the the goalkeeper's kick. Right. That's what that's when it happened. And, and he then still he, went up for the header. And he still followed it into yeah. the goal. And then he I was like, oh shit, that's something's wrong here. <laughs> so yeah, people are. Let's not get ridiculous about. It. Well, he gets an A minus because he's injured, or fuck, that takes him down to a B. Uh, if you want to, you can have your own rating system. But I mean, that's how we see it right now. What else we got? Um, Cade uh, Cal. <laughs> no, I mean he is a yank abroad, I suppose. Yeah. 
it's been okay. It's better than I thought it would it's be. Better than his, uh, it's better than his better than his San Jose seasons. It has been better than his San Jose seasons. So maybe like a C plus, B minus, somewhere around there. I don't know. It's been in, it's been a step forward. I can't just give him a C because it's looked like an improvement in general. Um, so I'm gonna give him a C plus because I feel like he's doing the exact same thing he does everywhere. <laughs> but they haven't figured it out they yet. Haven't figured, they haven't figured it out. Once they figure it out, I man, he's fucked. Because he's a one-trick pony. Although he did get one goal and one assist in oh, the uh, whatever that great, tournament was. Great call, Scorpion Lair. Paredes is not. Oh, he's, he's on the list coming up. Never mind. Hold on. Oop, scratch that. It was a good call still. Okay. Uh, um, Zendaya. C plus again. Not always a starter this season for Club America. Scoring some, some good still goals. Still scoring though. goals, though. So it's above average. He's still playing well, so I can't punish him. I, these are hard grades to give. Anyways, I, I'm still jaded from the Gold Cup, so. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess you can give him a gro a, gro a grouchy <laughs> no. a grouchy B minus uh, C plus C plus B minus range, whatever. Yeah, it's I fine. Mean, it's yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Prades. Um, it's a C plus. Yeah. Um, I, I know. I mean, starting, but um, it's better not, than average. But we talk about it every week. He's he's there, <laughs> right? Right. He's, he's a passenger he's not really asserting himself. He's a passenger on this game. Most of the games I see, beginning of the season was better. More recently, just a passenger in the games, not a difference maker, not standing out. Um, there are particular games where I was really wowed by him earlier in the season and thought, "Wow, this kid's dominating this whole wing." And then not so much lately. Not sure what's going on, but um, yeah, C plus because it is progress. But it could have been a B had he continued to play like he did er earlier in the season. So jumping back to Zendaya, he has eight goals and four assists so far this season. I'm happy with my B minus. Yeah, B minus is fair. It's progress. It's just not mind blowing. That's all. And if Zendaya wants to play for the U.S. men's national team, it's got to be mind blowing. Um, and that's in all competitions, I'm guessing. So that count counts the CCL games, which some of those were a joke. All right, um, Brandon Vasquez. Wow, I would give him like an A up until his last bunch of games where he went scoreless, but then he just scored against Miami. I'm giving him like a B. I think it's still a B. Are you so? Are you going to lump in the second half of the MLS season into this uh, decision? Well, or if I we just well, no, we can't because it's not uh, he was in the Yanks abroad at that point. That's correct. So yeah, that's it's just a, one way of uh, yeah. He's just started off really hot with Monterey. I mean, he was on fire. He was an A, 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 and then. More recently cooled off until the uh, the flubber calendar gift goal that he got. <laughs> so I'm going to retreat that from an A to a, a B for now and hopes he gets back on a scoring streak. Harder to judge yes, the, the Mexican League, it, Liga MX, because it just got started. I mean, they got a whole season to go, whereas right. we're en ending the European season. How many, uh, how many goals does he have so far this season? Do you know? Is it eight or nine? I think it was eight. I think it was eight recently. Uh, like the when the window occurred for the Nations League. Yeah. Um. So he he's done that in half a season so far. So I mean, yes. Uh, I'm gonna say BB plus range. Yeah, somewhere around BB plus. It's fine. Um, like I said, he started off like an A. The season's really just getting underway. There, mm -hmm. we're not that deep into the season yet. So I'd like to have a full season to judge, and we just don't get that uh, with Liga MX so far because it's just like with K Cal, we're not that deep into the season yet. So let me get a whole year full of a season, yeah. and then I'll be able to give a better grade. Taylor Booth incomplete. Yeah, what can you possibly say? He can't because he, he, came, he came in, had a couple, of <laughs> a couple of nothing burger games, and uh, he's been injured ninety percent of the season. Yeah, came in, played a bunch of nothing burger games. Then caught fire for a couple games, scored a bunch of goals, 
and then re-injured it, and now he's out for the rest of the season. So, incomplete, hard to give a kid a grade. Yeah, it's just painful, unfortunately. Um, and then oh. other players that were left off this list, unless you have more. P. Fox? Yep, P. Fox, one of them. I give P. Fox a C. It started out, it was like a B, and now it's kind of petering. So back down to a C, maybe C plus if you're really nice. Um, petered out a bit late uh, recently. Brooks. Brooks gets, a, I think, a B minus. I think he's played when he has played, which is often. He's been left off the lineup like every fourth game or something like that, depending on who they're playing. Uh, Matarazzo likes to change the the uh, the roster depending on the opponent. So yeah, he'll play three games, be out one, play four games, be out one. And then he got the red card. So he's out more recently, but then came back and played again. I have to give him a B, B minus. I think he's, he's had a relatively really good season for Hoffenheim. And the fact that there are no threat of relegation whatsoever for the most part, um, solid grade. Weinstein says, uh, all right, I'm off to bed. Fuck you guys. See you next time. Yeah, we didn't know the show was going to go this long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to rate. He's not worth it. Nor Zach Booth. But anybody, anybody else are missing? Oh, Max Dietz. I mean, definitely a B. Much progress made this season for Max Dietz. And uh, although not really a contender yet for a U.S. men's national team uh, spot, he could be verging on it soon. Uh, as early as after the summer, uh, going into next season uh, in the Bundesliga, because he's probably going to be playing for a better team, and I don't know if he's going to start right away or not, depending on who who scoops him up and buys him. Julian Green was having a B season too uh, until his recent injury. So, uh, anybody else we're missing here before we? Well, yeah, I mean we. Had... Probably even shouldn't have covered uh, Deets and Green for that matter because they really haven't been anywhere close to our uh, our senior squad. Yeah. Um, and if we if we started covering all the players who aren't close to our senior squad, then we'll be here for six hours. <laughs> we'll be here all at night, and we've been here too long to begin with. Holy crap! Uh, uh, Labrador says, "When is our thirty minute Derek Psycho Twitter reaction rant <laughs> need some for work tomorrow?" I don't really have one tonight. What's the craziest I got tonight? Uh, oh, the Burr Halter. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was a fun little topic. Footage, yeah. So you can rewind back to that and get some juice from that. But other than that, we got to call it a night, guys. Like three hours. This is a record show for us. This is the longest we've ever done. I think, Brett, am I correct? Yeah. And uh, we, uh, Yeah, about. Yeah, it'd have to be. And Brett's got some sleep to get. I've got. You know, more shows to watch tonight. Games I got to watch. Got to watch the AC Milan game tonight before I go to bed. And the rest of you have your stepsisters to get back to. So we can't do this all night. So I wish you the best. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with grandma. And lube up. Make sure you lube up if you're trying extra holes with the stepsister. Other than that, it should be natural, right? Shouldn't be any problem. Um, until next time on Straight Red Card, we will see you Monday. Have a great weekend. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? Wait, Derek. There's more. What? <laughs> I forgot. We had a couple super chats did up real quick. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll do them real fast. Let's but do them wait, real quick. There's more. Okay, so oh. here's uh, here we go. AJ four one zero MMMA for one ninety nine. Would a four one three two work with this current U.S. men's national team roster? It absolutely could work and would work, but. If you are waiting for Greg to do that, you are going to be waiting for a long time or you're going to be waiting for a um, an emergency. In the Jamaica game, didn't we kind of look like we went to like a two-tracker yes. role? Emergency. That's emergency, what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Emergency. I mean, urgent, urgent, urgent. Go ahead. Yeah. You just be playing Adams back there and then throw everything but the kitchen sink forward. Correct. So could you start that way? 
AJ141. Yes, you could. But I wouldn't expect Greg to start that way anytime soon. Scorpion, Larry for $2. Uh, GGG and Claudio like Wayne and Garth to Wea's dad. Greg and Claudio are like, like Wayne, Wayne and Garth, Garth to Wea's Wayne's dad. dad. Not worthy? Thanks for the two. Uh, that right Not in, worthy? Like, Not worthy. No worthy, I'm guessing. That's got to be it. They're not worthy to weigh his dad. Yeah, as players, probably not. I mean, George Weo was one of the best players to ever play in <laughs> Syria. So, <laughs> dude, uh, you're you're like uh like trying to work that in your head, and like all of a sudden, I'm just immediately jumping into. Thanks for the two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm trying to figure out Larry's state of mind, which is not. Which is not easy, by the way. <laughs> not easy to get into Larry's state of mind outside of the obvious things that Larry is very focused on. That is easy to get into. But, uh, but on this Demar one, says, oh, well, it's going to take him 30 minutes to figure this out. Let's hit that four-hour mark. <laughs> no, I think we just figured it out, BMR. Yeah. I think it's the, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. In that sense, yes, way I was. Wow. He won the Ballon d'Or, right? One season, at least. From what I remember, he won one. Right, yeah. so, uh, so yeah, what a great career he had. Uh, not so good in the Premier League, or not as good. But uh, where <laughs> else did he go? Uh, anyhow, yeah, sorry, BMR, I did figure it out, and now I got to make something up about your stepsisters again as we're closing out the show. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, I really don't. Watch a movie, have a good time, have a great time over the weekend. Um, watching the the games, I love it when we got a full uh, host of games or a full, full roster of games to watch, which we do this weekend. And um, be good to your stepsister, regardless. And if you have um, a stepbrother and a stepsister that are married or whatever, be nice to them too. And we will see you again on Monday. Have a good weekend. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> then what is this thing Gio should never play for US men's national team again because of the action of his parents because what an idiot oh what type of Muppet does this Muppets absolute Muppets